BBC Three Counties Radio. Lots coming up on the show this morning of varying quality and interest. Just being honest. As always, keen to get your thoughts on uh, on these things and anything else you want. So I'm just watching Catherine Ball next door. She's turned into Frank Spencer. She's gone all giddy. Coming up, unpleasant letters for revolting peasants. One in the eye for legal highs. And speeding drivers say save your fivers by not speeding because of variable speed cameras. Who writes this rubbish? Yeah, you. What on earth are you doing? Stop trying to do the intro. This is possibly the best bit of the show today. Oh, dear. You ready? A bit of bother. Oh, dear. Dear me. As long as you've not done a whoopsie in the garden. Facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR. You can send me a text, 81333. Start your text, 3CR. Or you can give me a phone call. Who's going to be the first caller of the day? Please don't let it be Dennis. Ah! 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties now, Radio. Just talking to your microphone, Catherine. Hello. Yeah, it's working. OK, we're, we're, we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, now, a little reminder that in this great uh, country of ours, most of us are mere minions to the landed gentry. Deal with it, Boyle. You're subservient to me. Oh, you're the landed gentry in this scenario, are you? The Marquess of Salisbury is claiming his man- manorial. Is that how you yeah, say that? and it's Marquis. Carry on. Does that mean... Ma- which, why? Which is the man? The other one's a woman. So Marquis. Mm-hmm. The Marquis of Salisbury... Marquis. ...is claiming his manorial rights in Welling Garden City. But don't worry, he doesn't want your biggest bag of wool or first dibs on your daughter, yet. This time, it's all about land. And some peasants are quite literally revolting. Well, our peasant correspondent, because she is one, Catherine Boyle, is here to tell us more. Catherine, what are your kinfolk up to these days? Thank you, Master. These are rights that were retained by the Lord of the Manor when the land became freehold so many centuries ago. They can include rights relating to mines and minerals, rights to hunt, shoot or fish on your land, even if you own it. So in theory, it means if uh, his Lord wants to dig up land to extract minerals or take a hunt through your back garden, he can. It seems a little bit old-fashioned. Well, it would. It dates back over a thousand years to Willem the Conqueror's coronation of, as England's king when uh, the feudal system was introduced. But the law changed recently, which states that people with manorial rights must lodge them with the land registry before October 2013. Oh. So that's been a gone. Or face losing them. That's why some residents in Welling Garden City got this letter. It does give them the option to opt out, but if the Marquis of Salisbury can prove he has the right to it, which he more than likely can, as his family have been there for many, many centuries, there's very little residents can do. I, I'm presuming that a, a peasant's revolt is occurring. People aren't happy about this, are yeah, they? Yeah, they're actually calling the campaign the peasant's revolt. Oh. Um, there's a worry that it might mean that fracking will take place on that land or mining of that land could take place, although geologists suggest that there are no minerals of any substance in that particular area and um, we'll be hearing later on from amanda white on the program she says she just paid her mortgage off and she got one of these letters wow. through the door which is why she set up the peasants revolt um calling on uh, the marquis of salisbury to forgo his right i mean she argues it's the 21st century and old-fashioned practices like this shouldn't exist she's aware that he probably won't exercise any of these rights and it's just a, a formality but she argues that the principle is there and she's gained some, some following on her facebook page and has been putting posters up and giving letters out alerting people people to the fact that this is happening. She's working hard. What has the Lord said himself? <laughs> well, we did invite Marcus of Salisbury onto the programme, but his people refer- referred us to oh. his solicitor, and they've given us a statement, okay. uh, which reads as follows. As a result of the Land Registration Act 2002, all historic manorial rights and ownerships had to be registered by October 2013. The Marquis of Salisbury has recorded his interest in the Hatfield Wellin area and elsewhere, and is keen to emphasise that this is a process that records pre-existing ownership, so homeowners should not be alarmed by it. He would expect anyone seeking further clarification to do so by reference to their solicitor or to get in touch with the estate solicitors, Mm -hmm. Bond Dickinson, LLP. And we did ask the Land Registry to come on, but they said that no one was available this morning. Uh, Has this occurred anywhere else? Apparently so. Similar thing happened in Bristol in September this year. Um, Patchway Lord of the Manor, Tim Shawland, who bought his title for £7,500, by the way, sent out a similar notice, and it caused a huge outcry because residents there were worried that he might want to start fracking in the area. He told the BBC he never had any intention to mine and the letters sent were a crazy land registry admin move. He said he received constant phone calls from concerned residents, including 
and this is in quotes, some old people crying on the phone. I know well, the feeling. That will do it. Yeah. Because of the backlash, he withdrew those rights, um, something that the Peasant Revolt in Welling Garden City want to see happen in Hertfordshire. Well, thank you, Catherine. We'll be joined by a peasant after seven. Uh, but I want to hear from you this morning. Are you on the side of the Lord of the Manor? He's simply exercising his birthright, isn't he? He sounds legit to me. Or are you on the side of the peasants? Are you a Lord or a peasant? Uh, 08459 455555. Catherine, that was excellent. Will you come and join me in about 20 minutes' time to have a look at the papers? Go on, I'm doing nothing else. Nice one. Uh, if you want to take part in that, you can do. 08459 455555. Facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR or... 81333 start your text 3CR. Morning! We've got a dilemma this morning. There's a dilemma. Crow. Look, got some cracking stories. The peasants think it's going to be a, a winner. Legal highs, we did it last week. We've got some superb, exciting news on how that story has moved forward. Partly, I, I believe, due to us talking about speeding. Great. What we haven't got, I think you'd agree with this, Catherine, what we haven't got is anything for the listener to call in about or talk about on Facebook. Yes. We haven't really got anything like that, have we? No. So I was hoping, I was wondering, if we could put this out to the listener... Oh, dear. Have you, dear listener, got anything that you could phone... Hang on, let me get... No. Have you got an idea for something that I can say on the radio that you can then phone in about? Does that make sense? Is that the phone in or is that the pre phone in? That's the pre phone in phone in. The phone in will then become the best thing that they suggest that people can phone in about. Okay. Aha, you see? So what we need 08459 four double five five. Ideas. Double five. Ideas for things that people can come phone in about. Then we will put that on Facebook and people can then also phone in about it. Maybe we'll send uh, J Dog up uh, sorry, Justin out to do a Vox on it as well. I mean it's, it's I can hear straws being clutched, definitely, <laughs> but what are you laughing for, Bets? You came in 30 minutes late. Have you got any better ideas? 15 minutes late. Uh, and the re- Get this, dear listener. Get this. The reason... Oh, my goodness. Just go round and, and <laughs> kneel in front of it. Oh, the, uh, the, go to Catherine's. Oh, the no, reason, he's not using my. The reason you were late, Kelly Betts? I forgot I left my car here, so I opened my door and my car wasn't there. There's the phone in. What, when, when did you forget Kelly Betts' car? Losing your car. No. Forgetting where you've put it. That's not going to work. Trying to get in someone else's. Is it, yeah, people have done that. Is that going to work? Okay, so let's. Okay, you set that up and put it out. Comedy car moments. Oh no. Oh, I like that one. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, comedy car moments. <laughs> oh, we'll get. We will get no calls on that. We'll get one call on that, and it'll be Dennis, and it'll be boring. I once tried to drive away from a uh, well-known toy shop with a load of things piled up on top of my car. That was hilarious. Was it Toys R Us? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, wait, four, and it was sugar paper. Okay. Oh, wait, four, five, nine, four, double, five, five, double, five. Uh, what was it? Comedy car moments. No, comedy car moments. We will get no calls on that, apart from Dennis. Oh, <laughs> goodness sake. <laughs> Who just squeaked? Oh, me. I used to put a Three Counties radio sticker in my blue jazz because otherwise... Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. Oh, it does work. Yes, it's a quarter past six. It's BBC Three Counties Radio. Let's find out who's doing the travel. Um, how many phone calls have we had about car crazy moments, Catherine? Crazy comedy car moments. Okay, how many? Uh, well, so far I've lost count. Not, We've not. Had, I, I can see the phone system. Not one of those lines is lit up. Crazy comedy car capers. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. It ain't gonna happen. No. Ain't gonna happen. Ah oh, dear. Facebook.com forward slash BBC Three CR. If you have something better that we can talk about, then please, you know, I don't want to sound desperate, but this morning we're really, really struggling. Well, we'll see. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. Car crazy moments. Catherine, I told you this wouldn't be a goer. We've got no call. Uh, fade one. Oh. Yes, line one. Who's this? Yes, you. Uh, hello. Who's this? How are you, how are you Ian? It's Stephen the Milkman. Stephen the Milkman. Have you called in to tell Catherine Boyle how ridiculous her car, crazy car moments thing is? No, I've come to come to her rescue. Oh, why? Go on. What's happened? He, 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 goes, he goes back uh, a few years. Me and my mate were going to a party. So we, we, I was going back to my house to pick up a bottle, and he had a bottle, so... Huh? As I'm going to my house, there's an off light on the corner, so I stopped and dropped him off. He got out, went and got his bottle. I went round to my house, yeah. picked up my bottle, come back round. Put, as I'm pulling into the, the lay-by opposite the shop, uh-huh. I see him getting in the car in front. 
So he was got he in the wrong car? Has he? <laughs> yeah. How long did he stay in the wrong car for? It, it, uh, not for not for long. It was lucky the people he got in the car with he knew, so it wasn't so embarrassing. But there you go. Well, I see. But I don't know if he rescued Catherine there, or if he just embarrassed her terribly. It's not, it's not the greatest story that we've had, Catherine, is it? It's not the best one. Good. It was excellent. Was well, that all we've had? Just that one. Just what he wanted. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, Lion Fader 2. Oh, who, hello, who's this? Hello. Hello, who are you? Hi, I'm Clary. Hello, Clary. Hello. Oh, oh. That's uh, uh, an amalgamation of two names you don't often hear. Claire, Clary, wh- what would you like to say? Um, I've got a crazy car story, actually. OK, let's hear it. Um, one day I opened my door and my car wasn't there. Wh- it's gone. Sorry? You opened... Wh- what? Your car door? Uh, my house door. You, you opened your house door and your car wasn't there. What had happened? I left it at work. Hey, is that Kelly Betts? No. Is that... That's Kelly Betts, isn't it? Then Clary. Why, Clary's that's not... a real name. It's not a real name. And why can't I see Kelly Betts in the studio next door? Because What's going on? I'm here. OK, Betts. Clary... Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> busted. Right, Catherine, that is rubbish. You've had one call from Steve the Milkman and Clary. Bye. Thanks for calling, Clary. Bye. Uh, uh, Kelly, stop it. Uh, I think it's because we phrased it wrong. Car confusion. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Jeez. I'm, okay, we'll see what happens. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, Craig. I know you've come in on a very serious story, and we're. we're I nearly swore then. We're messing around with that nonsense. Right, anyway. Uh, the reason Craig is here, because we're talking about the legal highs. We mentioned on last week's show uh, that were being sold openly on uh, Milton Keynes Market, despite police raids and safety concerns. Well, they've gone, apparently. Uh, a Milton Keynes reporter, Craig Lewis, joins me to explain what happened. Craig, remind our listeners what the situation was with these legal highs. Morning, Ian. Um, well, last week we spoke to police after being approached by the stepfather of a girl who um, her, one of her friends had brought legal high from Milton Keynes Market. They brought it back to her, she'd smoked it, and as a result of that she'd had to be rushed to Milton Keynes Hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, very ill, was fortunately OK in the end. And we spoke to police about that, and they actually said, yes, we do have an issue with legal highs on Milton Keynes Market. Uh, we've had a raid there in August, um, we're currently analysing the stuff that's there, but as yet we don't know the results and the problem with these legal highs is that it's a real grey area Uh, Milton Keynes Police Inspector Ian Jarvis told me that many of these drugs can have serious adverse effects uh, and that they're made up of purely chemicals Mm -hmm. there's a difference between these sort of legal highs and things like cocaine and heroin which bad as they are um, if they're cut purely they come from plants that they're natural and organic these stuff it's it's all chemicals and it can be changed very quickly what's in them The problem for police is they're imported from China and India and often cut with other substances, including Class A drugs and cut glass, things like that. As soon as they get one ba- as soon as one drug is banned, the manufacturers change a chemical element in them uh, and they send out a new legal drug that floods the market again. Um, police even say the name is misleading. Uh, in fact, they like to use the really catchy term "new psychoactive substances" or yep. NPS um, because they think legal highs makes the drug sound legitimate. What, and give us the names of some of these drugs that we're talking about here. Well, they like to use names that makes them sound like more traditional drug, drugs or drug paraphernalia. So we've got legal highs like herbal haze, salvia, legal skunk, that kind of thing. Right. Um, last week, I went down to Milton Keynes Market to try and find out just how easy it is to buy these sort of things, or yep. was to buy these sort of things. And it was really easy. I just found a stall that had a big sign above it saying legal highs. Oh, so I see. Um, yeah, it's discreet. It's a bit nice clue there. Yeah. Uh, went up to the stall, handed over a um, £10 note, and um, before I knew it, I had a nice packet of uh, something called herbal haze in front of me. Wow. Um, before I put my life in my hands and actually smoke this stuff, which is um, what the kids in the streets of Milton Keynes are apparently doing in yep. some cases, uh, I decided to read the back of the packet, and, and this is what it actually says on the back of these packet. Uh, it says, Hazards, harmful if swallowed, causes skin irritation, causes serious eye irritation, and may cause respiratory irritation. Precautions, uh, keep the container tightly closed, do not breathe dust, fume, gas, mist, vapours or spray. And if swallowed, call, call a poison centre or doctor. And, and this is the bit that's most interesting to me. I mean, it says, if inhaled, which yep. ultimately is what you're supposed to do with this stuff, you're supposed to smoke it, um, call a poison centre or a doctor physician if you feel unwell. Herbal haze is a research chemical and a lab reagent use only, and this product is not approved for consumption. OK, let's have, let's have, a, let's have a look at this. I'll, uh, 
conduct some experiments later on. What's happened since then? Because last week these were readily available on Milton Keynes Market. We spoke to the police and they were going, well, there's not really a lot we can do at the moment. So where, where are we now? Well, since then we've had a real breakthrough, really. Um, after I bought uh, that packet of herbal haze that you're analysing there... It, it's blueberry flavour, by blueberry the way. Flavor. Blueberry flavour. Yeah, well, I, I don't know whether that's a, a, a preferred flavour yes. or not, but, um, yeah, blueberry flavour. Um, after I bought that packet, um, I decided to give the owners of the Milton Keynes Market, Bray Associates, a call. Yep. Um, after I spoke to them, explained what was going on, they didn't really seem aware, which kind of surprised me a little bit, since they'd had a raid in August, but... Yep. Um, uh, but they bet said they'd be happy to talk to the owner of the stall in question and get them to take the legal highs off the stall. Lovely. Um, also, following our programme, as you mentioned, Milton Keynes Police spoke to Bray Associates as well, and the result of all of that is from Friday, legal highs were no longer being sold at Milton Keynes Market. <laughs> well, there you go. Cause we spoke, was it Ian Jarvis, the police officer that we spoke to last That's week? That's right, yeah. And I think he's coming on the show later on today. He was a little bit reluctant last week to, to, to contact the market, but we kind of twisted his arm a bit, and it, it seems to have paid off. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, Ian, I think, uh, after a, a little bit of conjoling, shall we say, from yourself, um, uh, decided that he, he would give them a call as well. I, I know for a fact that he did do that, and yeah. as I say, um, we've had a bit of a result here, I suppose. Craig, good work. Thank you very much indeed. Appreciate you coming in. Uh, we will be hearing from Milton Keynes Police and from Milton Keynes Trading Standards later on in the programme. If you want to have your say on that, 08459 455 555 is the telephone number. This is 08459 455 555. I'll put it out there... I don't want to embarrass Catherine Boyle. She's someone I've got a tiny bit of respect for. But I put it out there. What is it? Crazy moments that you've had in your car. Car confusion. Call me now. It keeps changing. Car confusion. Call you, me now. You need... 08459 four double five you need, five double five. You need consistency. So, wh- what are we settling Car on? confusion. Call me now. <laughs> oh, should we put it on the Facebook page? Yes. OK, there we go. So, ca- crazy car moments. Oh, car wait. confusion. Call me now. OK, thanks very much. It's 6.30. Let's get the news. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. It's this point of the show, we have a little little look through the newspapers. Catherine Boyle joins me here. Good morning. Hi. 08459 455 555. If you'd like to join us, and uh, we've thrown out this this pathetic, desperate, uh, last-ditch attempt at at, at starting a phone-in with um, crazy things that have happened in your car. No, 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 no. (laughs) <laughs> it's car confusion call me now 08459 four double five five double five. Yeah, and we've had literally one call that was steve the milkman which let's be honest was not his best call oh my mate got into, an, into the wrong car that's exactly what we asked for right lost we- yours got into the wrong one car confusion call me now we had kelly betts pretending to be someone called clary which was just let's be honest was embarrassing it's a true story though that's only half a lie but th- <laughs> Oh eight four five nine four double five five four. Let's see if we can get Justin Dealey on because we'll, we'll, if you're so convinced by this, we'll send him out to do a Vox on it, shall we? On car confusion, call me now. Yeah, okay. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. We'll be looking at the papers in a second, but I believe we've um, uh, we've got a call. Fred's in Milton Keynes. Morning, Fred. Hello there, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, Fred. You've called in about crazy cars. I am. Well, no, it's crazy not crazy car- cars, it's car, car confusion. confusion. Call no, me right. now. Thanks, uh, Fred. OK, thank you. Right, go on, Fred, what is it? Um, I used to work in post offices around London, oh, yeah. uh, doing maintenance work. Yeah. So I'd start at six o'clock in the evening when they shut, and I'd finish anywhere between sort of midnight and two o'clock. Lovely. And the licensing laws had just changed, yeah. and they were allowed to open 24 hours. Beautiful, like beautiful. So I thought I'd stop and get myself a couple of cans of beer on the way home to have yeah. a nice little drink before I went to bed. A little, tr- little, uh, little kestrel treat, of course. Who, who wouldn't Absolutely want to do fantastic. that? fantastic. Yeah. So I saw this neon sign. Yeah. I thought, excellent. 24-hour off licence. So I pulled up in a bus stop outside the shop yeah. in my transit van. Yeah. Cli- went to climb out of the driver's door. I'd opened the door and I was halfway out. I looked over and this girl had got in. Oh, hello. She was extremely good looking. She had a very, very short skirt on. Oh, hey. Uh, yes, and I thought my luck was in. Yeah. Anyway, turns out she was a prostitute and thought I'd stop to pick her up. Well, that's very fortunate. Did she, did she not even tap on the window and she just, <laughs> just got no, in? she just climbed in the van. And what, what happened then? Well, I, I explained very politely that um, that wasn't why I'd stopped. Out the van and left without my beer very quickly. Uh, oh, mate. Well, the, the, the Fred, thank you very much for that. Catherine, is this really the calibre of calls we want? Someone talking about prostitutes getting into their vans? Car confusion. Call me now. 08459 455555. Justin? 
Morning, boss. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry to rope you in on this, but listen, if I'm mm. going to, if, if my ship is going down, then your dinghy's going down as well. Yeah, clearly. Well, you, as you know, we've been a little bit, d- d- we haven't got much for you to do this morning. I know you're going off to talk yeah. about speeding, and I appreciate that. We haven't got a light-hearted phone-in for you. Yeah. So, Catherine Boyle has come up with uh, things that have happened in your... No, 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 no. Car confusion. Call me now. Okay. 08459 four double five five double five. Not every time. Do you, uh, do you reckon you could get a Vox on that? got to be honest with you, Ian, when I joined the BBC, phone-ins like this, they just weren't in a brochure. But if you want it, I'll certainly try for you, but we really are kind of scraping the barrel here, aren't we? Hey, come on, this is the bad attitude. Sell it, sell yeah. it. Car confusion, call me now. No, uh, four, five, nine, please, four, five, five, please double stop five. doing that. Justin, where are you off to now? Um, I'm in Bedford, uh, about to go and do a feature on uh, thousands of people that have been caught Brilliant. speeding in yeah. Norton Ernest, which is uh, a real story, of course, um, as opposed to car confusion, call me now. Thank you very much, Justin Daly. Um, oh, do you, Catherine, you probably want to speak to Robbie in Cambridge. Hi, Robbie. Hello, how are you? Have you had a confusing episode in a car? Well, it's not so much confusing, it's just, um, it was a bit funny and a bit, um, yeah, a bit downright kind of uh, scandalous, really. Oh, tell me more. We were in uh, South Africa on holiday, and so we hired a car. Um, this is when I was about four or five. And we uh, basically, we were in Cape Town, and so we were out on the mountains enjoying this view. Um, and my dad taking his pictures, and suddenly this big troop of baboons come down the mountain behind us. Troop of baboons? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like monkeys. Yeah, I know what they, I know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get on with it. So we, uh, yeah, so we, we, we wound the windows up which was fine because they're quite vicious um, and then they suddenly start just clambering all over the car which is fine no real problems there but then one of them tries to clamber up the passenger window and in doing so um, drags um, his private parts over the window um, and um, as try, as try as we may over the next few days we could not get this smear off the window um, and then we took the car back to the car hire company and they charged us 250 quid. <laughs> because we, I mean, I don't know if this is something JVS wants to take up on his show, but, I mean, we got charged 250 quid because there was this rather distinct kind of testicle mark on the window. I don't know if I can say that at 6.30 in the morning. But, yeah. So, I mean, that, it wasn't so much funny. I mean, I didn't forget where I put the car. Um, but, but you forgot to keep the baboon off it. So yeah, I, mean, I think it still counts. I'm counting it. I'm counting I mean, it. There's not really much you can do when a baboon's climbing on your car. I mean, no. you can't really shout at them. You could can't you, wind your window down because they'll take you your not, face off. Did, did you not give it the horn? Sorry? Did you not beep your horn? I think he had one already. <laughs> Thank you oh, very much indeed. Go. There we go. You see, this you is, did that. No, I didn't. I mean, beat the horn to scare them off. This is what you've. This is what you're you happy with. This so so far. No, you did that bit. Your fo- your phoning topic has uh, relate is has caused members of staff to phone in under pseudonyms. I don't know if you you know the BBC gets monitored for that kind of stuff. That's broken a few rules. Um, a man talking about a prostitute, and another man talking about a, a monkey's genitals. Is are you really happy with that? Hey, listen, real stories, real time. Oh, eight four five nine four double five five five. Let's have a look in the papers. What have you got? I've got the sun. Okay. <laughs> what With I meant? Miley Cyrus smoking on the front. Oh dear, dear me. Miley, Miley Cyrus. Um, uh, also, phone scandal. Fifty-six million pound phone scandal. Tell me more. Desperate callers, including crime victims and the bereaved, were forced to fork out £56 million last year dialing government helplines at premium rate. Oh, it's just my phone bill. Hey, here's an interesting... you talk about Miley Cyrus. Here's an interesting picture. It's Lady Gaga wearing um, oyster shells as a bra um, and as pants as well. But look, look who she's hugging in that picture. Oh, it's Doc Cotton. Doc Cotton. It's Lady Gaga and Doc Cotton. That's apparently, their most unusual accessory yet. I know, apparently they're really good friends. It's not weird. Very weird. Also in the Express, page 11, it's talking about... Uh, D- Downton Abbey. It's, Downton Abbey's in a lot of the papers this morning, yeah. and we've mentioned this before. I just don't... I don't get it. There's talk about maybe the butler has killed the guy who used to be in EastEnders. Oh. And I, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand this fascination. 11.8 million fans count days to festive TV tree. Millions of Downton fans feel bereft after the fourth series drew to a close last night. They've only got six weeks to wait before the Christmas special, which TV insiders say is the most spectacular episode ever. Well, it doesn't have to do much to be a spectacular episode. All they do is drive around in big hats and old cars. 
Rubbish. Yeah, you're not down with Downton. I haven't watched about, I've watched about three episodes and just didn't get into it, but yeah. obviously I've missed the boat there. <laughs> talking to telly, uh, everyone talking about these new adverts that have been on over the weekend. Oh, yes. Really? The Christmas adverts. Yeah, so it's um, the one with the bear in the hair. John Lewis. And the one with um, Rosie in her pants. Her clothes just kept falling off all the That's way through, didn't they? Marks and Spencers. Yes. I was watching the Marks and Spencers one. I did keep saying, do, I mean, it was nice to see her in her pants, but I did keep saying to wife, do, do, do we need to see her in her pants? And also, I think... His Ma- pants didn't come off on display. Theory, and also, um, they've, they've spent a fortune on getting Helena Bonham Carter in there, right? My mum will not have a clue who Helena Bonham Carter is, and that's who that's aimed at, surely, that advert. Mm-hmm. So who's that? she'll be going, who's that slightly scruffy woman? I'm not totally sure who she is. I mean, she's, she's, she's married to uh, Tim Curry from... Uh, not Tim Curry. Tim Burton. Tim Burton, that's the fella. Uh, but, but beyond that, I know not what. Well, obviously, they're trying to be artsy. Artsy, fartsy. So that's in the papers, just talking about the adverts. I mean, it shows that, the, that we are bereft of good TV, doesn't it, when we start to obsess about adverts? There is nothing on television, apart from uh, Series 4 of The Walking Dead on Fox. Oh. oh. I don't like that fella. Oh, you don't like egg? Mm. Why? What's wrong with Andrew I don't know, Lincoln? I just, I just, just he, he does a good American accent. Yeah. yeah. Well, so he should. It's his job. I won't go to America and appear in a television series with an American accent. You can get away with it there, though. I'm it's... got got an American accent. I'm going to come from the Bronx. I'm going to kick you so hard. I'm going to kick you from here all the way back to Texas. Okay, maybe you can't get away with it. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. What things have happened to you and your car in recent times? Do give us a call. No, let... no, no. That's not it. Car confusion. Call me now. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. Morning, Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio, 08459 455 555. We're asking for your uh, crazy car moments. I know it's a little bit desperate. It's not crazy car moments. Oh. You've got to set it properly. What, d- OK, you set it's it up. It's called Car Confusion. Call me now, 08459 455 555. What are you doing with your mouth, then? Car Confusion. Call me now. <laughs> Goodness sakes. Exactly. Now, speed cameras on the A6 at Bedford have clocked more than 4,300 motorists since being activated three months ago. The cameras monitor average speeds on a 30-mile-an-hour section of the road, which runs through Milton Ernest. Well, we can speak to our reporter, Justin Dealey, who's in Milton Ernest now. Good morning, Justin. Oh, Justin, where are you? Where are you? He's disappeared. We'll get Justin back in a second. You ha- those average speed cameras, you have to be very, very careful with them. I, I was driving along the uh, M40 at the weekend... And there was an average section, 50 miles an hour. And I was getting flashed and beeped for driving at 50 miles an hour. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, Justin, I think you're, you're there now. Remind us, how many motorists have been caught by these speed cameras since they were activated? Well, incredibly, since uh, the 1st of August until the 31st of October, 4,000... 364 motorists have been caught here driving through this small village. Now, what I can't do, Ian, is give you a figure on how much money has been raised, because recently the fine has gone up to £100. That was a fortnight ago. Some of the motorists, they haven't been traced, and some people haven't paid the fine at all. What they've done, they've paid to go on a speed awareness course. But either them. way, those figures, 4,364 motorists in, in that short space of time, is I find staggering. I Justin, you, I, I believe I you've, got a, you've got a guest with you. Is that correct? Who have you got? Yes, We've got Sir Chiro Champney who's with me. Um, You live locally. You got caught. Uh, When did you get caught here? I got caught at the end of August uh, this year. And did you agree to pay the fine or go on a speed awareness course? Having a clean licence, when I received the letter, I was given the three options. Either go to court, um, take an AA drive tech course for £91.62, or take the three points and a £100 fine. Um, obviously, it's a no-brainer to take the course. So you took the course. Now, as we look here through the village, uh, some people say these figures are, are incredible. Um, it goes from a 50, certainly the route that I came in, it goes from a 50 down to a 30. Uh, the cameras are Gatso cameras on the A6. Coming through the village here... From what I can see, they look quite sneaky. Explain to our listeners how these cameras work here. They're on an average speed limit as you go through the village. So as you enter Milton Ernest from the north or the south, uh, very small yellow cameras up high on lampposts, and they take your speed as you enter, and they record your speed as you leave the village. Um, I actually requested a photograph when I received my, my letter, and... I could see from that how the cameras actually work and where the images are taken. The thing is, the signage, when I attended the course last week, 22 out of 24 people on the course were all um, caught at Milton Ernest. Seriously. And it's people that drive this route daily. Um, one of our guys at, uh, at work, he had four, four tickets in a week. 
So that was one every day for four, four days. Four tickets in a week? Four tickets in a wow. week. Wow, I mean, just lastly here, um, we have got Bedford Borough Council coming on the programme in around an hour's time. You've been caught here, loads of people you know have been caught here. What is your message to Bedford Borough Council? I think it's signage. I think we all agreed on the on the course last week. We shouldn't be speeding through Milton Ernest. I'm not proud this moment of my career or work, everything else. Um, just it's something that happened. But to be caught four times in a week, there's something not quite right in, in educating the people and understanding how the speed limit works. If you come from Sharnbrook to Bedfordshire, which is my daily drive home, you go from 50, and then there's a really short stretch of less than 100 yards where it goes down to 40, and then you're bang into 30. Um, and the signage for the average speed cameras isn't amazing. Um, it's quite... If you actually carry on driving, when you hit the next cameras, which are the Gatso ones, there's huge signs saying this is a police uh, speed check area. Yeah. So it's a little bit sneaky. Uh, it's not really, really, really well... I agree. Cheer, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. That said, Cheer, I think I agree with what he says there, Ian, in terms of, of driving through the village here. Yeah. You've, got the, you've got the big Gatso cameras on yeah. the A6 where it's 50. You can see those clearly. Yeah. And then suddenly you come through the village and you can't really see the cameras unless you're looking very, very carefully. Is there a clear sign that says 30 miles an hour? Uh, is there a clear sign? Yes, there is a clear sign. Then what's the problem? I know what you're saying, but no, some what's, people... No, what's, what's, the, what's the problem? Listen, as someone who has been caught three times this year, I did a speed awareness, yep. and I've got six points, I, I, I can't... I get annoyed, but it's entirely my fault. If people aren't prepared to drive at the speed limit, then they should be prepared to, to take the points. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that to a certain degree, but of course, you know, everyone with their busy lives, if they're going just above the speed limit, if somebody's driving through here, and doing, I don't know, 50 miles an hour, things like that, but Chiro was doing, what, 38 miles an hour in a 30? It's eight but miles over... Hang on, yeah, but for whatever reason, not everyone's speedo could be accurate. Oh, course, no. Eight, hang on, no, that's, that's a fact. I think if you talk to anybody, nobody's speedo is going to be 100% accurate. That's why the speed cameras take that into account occasionally. Okay, so I don't know precisely how that works. Eight, but but eight, eight miles over, over a speed limit, Justin, that is exciting. Mm. Is it excessive? Yes. It, it, you think so? Well, I, t- I tell you what, should we put it out to the listeners, see what they think? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think if you're doing 20 miles an hour above, but I think, you know, if, if you're within 10 miles an hour, if you take into account your speed, it might not be working properly, and for whatever reason you've got things on your mind, we can't always be looking precisely at our speeder when we're driving our vehicle, can we? Justin, thank you very much. I, I disagree, but let's put that out to the listener. Who, who, who do you agree with there, Justin or myself? Whose fault is it? Bad signage uh, or a heavy right foot? Call me now, 08459 455 555. Listen, I got six points on my licence this year. Uh, I think one of them, I was doing about six, seven miles above the speed limit. My fault. No one to blame but me. Or am I being harsh? Well, it's a car-themed show. Car crazy moments. Give us a call. No, 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 no. Car confusion. Call me now. 08459 four double five five double five. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Lots coming up on the show this morning, including unpleasant letters for revolting peasants, one in the eye for legal highs, and speeding drivers say save your fivers by not speeding because of variable speed cameras. Do you have any sympathy for people who get caught speeding? Well, even if it's only a few miles an hour above the speed limit. I've had a text on this, actually. Uh, Nick has texted in. If you get caught speeding, tough. 30 miles per hour is 30 miles per hour. The fact that you're not concentrating on the road or you're in a rush is not an excuse. Well, listen, speaking of someone who has six points, I kind of have to agree. Both those times, it was my fault. But maybe you think you should be able to go six, seven, eight miles an hour over the speed limit. And also, things that have gone wrong while you've been in a car. No, 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 no. Car confusion. Call me now. 08459 four double five five double five. Catherine, we really need to have a chat, please. Off it. Thank you. Facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR. You can send me a text. 81333. Start your text 3CR. Or you can call me now. 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Now... Here's an interesting one that I'm sure you'll want to have your say. And you know you thought this was the 21st century. Well, so did people in Welling Garden City. Until a letter from the landed gentry whisked them right back to 1066 because the Marquess of Salisbury is claiming his manorial rights. Rules dating back to the Doomsday Book give him rights to people's land, even though they own it. 
it's fair to say they're not particularly happy and uh, Amanda White who's joining me in the studio now is leading a modern day peasants revolt good morning Amanda good morning so just describe do you live in a house do you own it what's, the, what's I, your situation I, I live in a terraced house in uh, Welling Garden City and I own it absolutely outright have you paid the mortgage off I paid the oh. mortgage off about a week before oh. this notice well, arrived good for you for doing that that's an achievement the, you, you got a letter through the post didn't you what yeah. did it say uh, it was from the land registry it's just come a little bit closer to the microphone sure. so we can hear it. that's it's it. a notice b113 i'm not familiar with it, those no nor was i and would rather not be uh informing me and other residents near me that the marquis of salisbury was registering his unilateral manorial rights mm. over my property Mm. So, and, and did it say anything? Did it explain that in detail, or it just? It, it, there's some some notes right. accompanying it from uh, his solicitors, who were obviously handling this on his behalf. Um, basically, this dates back, you know, as you said, you know, right, right back. It used to be something called copyhold, and then that was abolished, and um, the lands were sold freehold. But these rights, these manorial, as in Lord of the Manor rights, yeah. were retained, including things like hunting, oh. shooting, fishing, holding fairs and markets, and mining mineral rights, which L- is what we're wh- the most worried about. This, really. I suspect, is your main concern. We'll get to mm. that in a second. When you got the letter, mm. what did you think? How did you feel? I was absolutely furious. <laughs> How dare he in this day and age? You know, Especially if I just paid off the mortgage and I was feeling so good about it so um, uh, the very first thing I did was to to write to Grant Shapps our RMP mm. uh, and then I produced loads of leaflets and went and tacked them up against trees and telegraph poles in the neighbourhood I'd never done anything like that in my life before I was so angry I wanted everyone to write to their MPs local councillors and did your neighbours did you, you speak to your neighbours and uh... Uh, yes and uh, I at the time wasn't on Facebook Facebook, uh, uh, but another lady, uh, Kim Thomas, uh, uh, she had actually already started a group on on Facebook, so she contacted me, and and it's kind of snowballing now. People, mm. you know, are getting on board with us. You know, we've got letters up in the um, uh, local shop corner shop windows, etc. Come and join us on Facebook, etc. I'm corresponding on Street Life as well. Uh, you got in touch with Grant Shapps, your MP. What does he have to say? Nothing very useful at all, frankly. Uh, oh. you know, I got a letter back uh, through his office uh, just uh, saying that the rights have always existed and they don't affect uh, ownership of the property, so don't worry about it. It's completely misjudged the, the mood of the people. But you are worried about it, and, and, I and it is. Right. Uh, I guess it's unlikely he's the, the law. The, the law is going to hold a, a hunt through your back garden. But it's it's the, the, the mining, isn't it, that concerns you? Why is that such a concern? Uh, well, literally, the, the possibility of undermining uh, our, our houses and. Um, a lot of people say, well, you say it's unlikely he's going to exercise the right to hunt, but it's just the theoretical possibility. You know, it, it, to me, it's immaterial whether he can come on my land once every thousand years or, or you know, 24-7, 365. It's the principle that he has rights over land that I own and other residents own that get me. L- let me read you a statement. We, we asked Lord Salisbury to come mm. on the show. He said no. Mm. Uh, but his solicitor sent us uh, this statement. As a result of the Land Registration Act 2002, mm. all historic manorial rights and ownerships had to be rec- registered by October 2013. The Marquis of Salisbury has recorded his interests in Hatfield, Wellin area and elsewhere and is keen to emphasise... This is a process that records pre-existing ownership. Homeowners should not be alarmed. Uh, He would expect anyone seeking further clarification to get in touch with his solicitor. What do you make of that? Um, I think he'd be rather alarmed if I issued a similar notice uh, over his. I do understand that these alleged rights, and we have no proof from the Marquis that he actually has those rights, um, uh, were supposed to have existed all this time through from... 18 whenever with the uh, copyhold act but there is no proof and there was previously no record so i along with others in well in hatfield bought land from the council and you know regular searches showed nothing mm. because these rights were previously yes you would think that would, would have come up in a, in a uh, it, land registry it, search or something it would one would think so but clearly they were not registered so in theory they were alre- always existing but as i say we have been provided with no proof Office. Has your Peasants' Revolt got much backing? 
Uh, we're beginning to get some of the local councillors are, are coming on board. Um, but again, I, I, I wrote to one of my councillors and two weeks ago and haven't even had an acknowledgement. Oh. Uh, so uh, I think well in Hatfield... Write again. <laughs> yeah. keep, no, seriously, I, no. this is what I've learned from, from doing yeah. this and listening to Jonathan's show. Yeah. Keep writing and keep phoning until you get something back. Yes. Well, we'd like them on our side, actually. Mm. I think they should be defending us. And... Um, well, as I say, some of them are coming on board now. I've been okay. corresponding with them, so we're going to keep going with that. Uh, and I want to uh, want to shame the Marquis into giving up mm. these rights. If he's not going to exercise them, why why register them? All he can do is blight our properties and cause distress to us residents. Where do you go next? What what, what do you do next? Uh, well, we're talking about marches uh, um, and what have you. Again, not something I've ever done in my life. Um, I'm also going to be in touch with the Equalities and Human Rights Commission later this morning because uh, that includes, under the Human Rights Act, my right to peaceful enjoyment of my property. Mm. I don't feel I have very peaceful enjoyment of it at the moment. So we're looking for ways. Some people are looking for sort of legal loopholes to, to get this undone. Again, I, I would like proof provided, whereas none has been. Uh, otherwise, it's can we uh, uh, approach it from other angles? Uh, we want to shame him into into mm. giving this up. Frankly. Have you had any direct communication with uh, Lord Salisbury? No, I haven't. See, that's disappointing, isn't it, it? It is. I mean, this just came through through the his solicitors and the land registry. No announcement, no letter, mm. nothing until you get in touch with mm. him when he makes a statement. Um, I just think he's um, not realised how outdated and how furious people are about it. If people um, uh, want to get involved with your <laughs> campaign, what can they do? Where, where do they go? Well, go to Facebook, yep. uh, and our group is Well in Hatfield Residents Against the Marquis of Salisbury. You can't miss us there. Right. And join up, and it, it's such a, a great way of sharing news. You know, we've, um, as you mentioned, he has property elsewhere. Uh, a woman from Liverpool joined us on Facebook saying up in Liverpool she's wow. been affected by the Marquis's uh, unilateral notice as well. And as this is growing, people are getting different ideas, looking into different angles for this, and um, it's a great way to share information. Are, are you not concerned that maybe this is just, that you're making a mountain out of a molehill? This is just a legal thing that he has to do just to cover his back, and but it, no one will notice any change? He doesn't have to do it. He could have chosen not to do it, and there are cases uh, in Bristol, for example, where uh, due to public uh, opinion, the uh, Lord of the Manor there dropped those rights. So he doesn't have to do it. A mountain out of a molehill? No. This is an English woman's home is a castle, <laughs> or I thought it was mm. until this came along. In the 21st century, there's no room for this bullying and, and greed, frankly. Amanda, I appreciate you coming in this morning. You're right, it's very, very early. Mm. We could have got you on at six, so you, you got off lightly. <laughs> I'm very glad it was a bit later. <laughs> Keep in touch with us and let us know how the campaign goes, and we'll probably speak to you again in a few right. weeks. Thank, Thank you very you much very indeed. Much. That's Amanda White. If you want to have your say on that, you're more than welcome to. 08459 455 555. On the subject of speed cameras, there are some residents uh, in a village who are very upset because they've been caught by average speed cameras. Richard's in Bedford. Good morning, Richard. Oh, good morning, Ian. What would you like to say? Well, I think, I think you know, the blame is both, isn't it? The bad driving and um, cause the signing is very adequate there, but um, there isn't a signing warning you there's an average speed camera. I didn't know that. I know where the camera is. It's a yellow one coming in from Russian high up on a post. Right. And where's the other one then going out? Because cameras have got to, I think by the law states, the cameras have got to be visible. The, uh, there are several cameras, aren't there? There, are, there are, is a Gatso, your normal. Yeah, I know where the Gatso is when you go and start to go into the bypass. And there are, are two average crazy. speed cameras. But, but surely, the, if, you're, if you're speeding, you're speeding, and, and yeah, you should... Right. Yeah, and you shouldn't be, and you get caught, you've got, <laughs> you know, you've got choices. What, what, you get points or take the course. But... You need to see the other camera. Where's the other camera? I didn't know. There should be, surely there should be signing warning you there is um, an average speed camera, like there are when they put these average speed cameras up. They give you plenty of adequate warning, mm. but they don't there. So, so where is the other one, then, to get, get, give you the average speed? Richard, we will find... Justin Dealey is, is there this morning. We will find out the exact location, not in any way to tip people off, but just so you are aware. And I think there is signage there. It, 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 it just could be argued it's not particularly clear. 
but my argument is and i don't want to sound you know unfair if you're speeding and you get caught whether it be an average speed camera or a gatso it's kind of tough isn't it isn't it really i haven't got any tea bags kelly Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm interrupting this uh, bulletin to, uh, to sort out a tea. So, yeah, just uh, thank you very much indeed. It's kind of your fault, isn't it? I know we get a bit bitter when it's average speed cameras. We feel cheated, but should we? I've just got a, a tweet here, and I, I, and I think this... I hadn't picked up on this. Apparently, Justin Dealey earlier on said, you should be allowed to speed, quote, if you've things on your mind. I didn't... If that's true... Have you said a tweet on that? Thank you for that. If that's true, I hadn't picked up on that. That is... It's an unusual um, attitude to have towards speeding, isn't it? We'll find it and see if he did say that. Lots on the show this morning. Lots to do about cars. It seems to be a car-themed show. We'll talk to Stephen in Redbourne in a second uh, about speeding. Um, But uh, earlier on the show, we weren't desperate for content, but let's just say we didn't have much. Uh, And so Catherine came up with uh, things, crazy things that have happened. No, 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 no. Car confusion. Call me now. 0845 945555. I just think that car confusion is a very limiting... No, no, no. Where have you left yours? Did you get in the wrong one? Did you press your thing and it went off over the other side of the, the car park? That doesn't even mean... Car confusion. Call me now. 0845 we- Kelly Betts had car confusion this morning, didn't you, Kelly Betts? I did. I opened my door to get in my car and it wasn't there. I'd left it at work. So oh, maybe. confusing. But <laughs> <laughs> you it girls happens. Are, okay. Car well, there's Facebook. Lisa uh, Hunter. What confuses uh, me is bad parking, especially in supermarkets where some what? people park a car like it's been abandoned. I hear. You. Something else that confuses me is people who've apparently passed their driving tests yet do not know what a no entry sign is and then proceed no. to drive the wrong way in a one way no, street no, no. and then have a completely sat nav sav out you when you dare oh right. they completely sav out you when you dare to tell them they're no, the wrong s- no right Sarah, that's you. facebook confusion that's facebook that's not that's not car confusion that's here's one car Ruth annoyance Ronianski on facebook my uh. husband is partially sighted and has problems seeing uh, other cars especially when it's dark this has led to him several times getting in the wrong car and frightening the occupants especially when it's an elderly person oh dear you're now producer of this show mm-hmm. i've had some great producers since i've worked here at bbc three Thanks. countries right have you ever done car confusion? Call me now. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. We've had uh, Laura, who was excellent. Producer Laura, mm-hmm. producer Tara, who was wonderful. Yeah. Do <clears> you <throat> really think? <clears throat> Sorry. You've missed me out. Yeah, I'm saying that I'm talking about the good ones. You oh. should ask yourself why you go through them so quickly. <laughs> do you? And why am I still here? Yeah. Do you, do you think you're meeting the high standards that they have set for this show? They haven't done car confusion, have they? Call me now. Oh, 08459 Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. I hate those two sometimes. Uh, on the subject of speeding, there are some people in uh, a village who are very, very... It set speed cameras on the A6 at Bedford have clocked more than 4,300 motorists since being activated three months ago. The cam- they're the average speed cameras. Uh, they're on a 30-mile-an-hour section of the road which runs through Milton Ernest. We heard one chap got busted four times in a week. Now, have you got any sympathy for those people? I've got six points on my licence. I got them this year. I was angry, I was upset, but hands up, it was my fault. I knew what the speed limit was. I went too fast. And we find those average speed cameras annoying, don't we? But, really, we shouldn't be speeding. Stephen's in Redbourne. Stephen, have you got any sympathy for these people? Uh, No, I want speed cameras outside of our place. Tell me why. Um, yesterday, two motorbikes racing, doing a hundred mile an hour plus. Oh, flipping heck. And that's nothing. You've got cars coming down there doing the same sort of speed as well. Do you live on the M1 or something? Not far from the M1, but uh, we're stuck between M. Lempstead and Redbourne. And so they just come bombing, bombing through, do they? Yeah, well, they come from M. Lempstead down towards us, and as I say... We've asked for speed cameras, and they won't put them up. We've got to have three fatalities in one year. Yeah, that's that, that's the thing, isn't it? You only get signs and speed cameras put up cra- crazily if someone gets killed. Well, we've had a fair few killed along this road. Right. You know, but it's not three in one year. Oh, dear. What, a, what a depressing target to have to reach. Yeah, well, as I say, um, there was two policemen out there sorting out an accident last year, and I said to him, is there any chance of speed cameras? He said, we're not allowed to put them up, because uh, this is only one uh, person has died. 
Uh, he said, so you've got to go to the council and ask the council, and the council are not interested either. Stephen, uh, uh, incredible. I appreciate you calling that. Thank you. 08459 four double five five or five. Now, legal highs that were openly on sale at Milton Keynes Market have been removed from stalls after an investigation on this programme. Last week, police told us that while the drugs were legal, there were serious concerns about their safety and legislation was struggling to keep up with the amount of new substances. One that's been banned is methadrone, once sold as a legal high. Now it's the drug of choice in Milton Keynes. Well, we'll hear from Milton Keynes Trading Standards in a couple of minutes, but before that, we can speak to Joe O'Connor from Compass, a leading national provider of services to tackle problem drug and alcohol use. Good morning, Joe. Morning. How dangerous can these legal highs be? They can be incredibly dangerous. I mean, we don't know what's in them and what the long-term or short-term effects of them are. Um, and like you mentioned, methadrone has um, really taken off in popularity. Um, it becoming illegal didn't really make a difference um, in that. And uh, we are seeing it. Um, in our young people, we work with young people up to the age of 18. It's not primary drug of choice. That remains cannabis. Um, however, it's, um, it's very high up there in terms of its popularity with young people. The, the, these legal highs, I, I guess, is that part of the problem? That, that because that they sound legit. Exactly. I mean, just to call them legal highs does suggest that they've been quality assured in some way. And um, it does create a whole new opening in the market for young people who may have been put off by the consequence of getting in trouble at school or getting a criminal record if they maybe wanted to go on to university. With that consequence removed, um, it opens up, like I say, a whole new market um, for dealers of legal or illegal drugs to to young people who no, don't really have to worry about that if they if they haven't been criminalized young people are, are, are curious and they are interested and and some of them are always going to experiment aren't exactly, they yeah. I, is there any real harm in them experimenting with these um I- the, the, the short-term effects um, would suggest, and this is also backed up by people who have used illegal substances, that these legal highs are actually stronger than the substances they're designed to mimic. Um, so, for example, people who have been using cannabis for 20 or 30 years won't touch herbal haze because it's too strong. Therefore, you know, like I said, the, the overdose potential is, is higher because we don't know what's in them, but also the types of drugs that young people are being introduced to at the experimental stage are a lot stronger stronger than than traditionally um, with the illegal substances. So if if, if, uh, young people or people of any age uh, want help with, uh, may have some questions or want help with with drug problems, where can they go? Well, um, we are commissioned in Milton Keynes to provide support for young people up to the age of 18, but we also offer advice and guidance to parents and professionals so they can get in contact with us. And for those that are over 18, um, our adult providers are CRI. Joe, I appreciate your time this morning. That's Joe O'Connor from Compass, a leading national provider of services to tackle problem drug and alcohol use. So I'm joined now by Steve Rycroft from Milton Keynes Trading Standards. Steve, I'm guessing it's impossible for you to police these legal highs simply because they're legal. Uh, yeah, it's very, it's very, very difficult. I mean, as Joe's already explained there, you know, the word legal meaning something or implies that the product has actually been attested or approved in some way. And obviously, clearly, that's not the case, um, you know, for the for the use and what they're being used for. Um, you know, these items aren't being tested. I understand that, that um, trading standards have been called by companies asking for advice on how they can sell these legal highs. Is that right? Well, the, prob- the problem being is, you know, the way that they're being dis- described, they're being described as research chemicals. Now, obviously, if it's a research chemical, it, it requires to comply with certain legislation. Um, and people, you know, we, we've had approaches um, from companies asking, you know, how to comply with the labelling requirements for a research chemical. Now, there's no way that we're endorsing the fact that these are what these items are actually being used for. But if it's being used, as a, if it's being sold as a research chemical, then it has to, has to require a certain piece of legislation. What would you like to see done, Steve? Oh, I'd like to see us have uh, stronger powers in, to actually deal with these items. I mean, at present, you know, there are pieces of legislation that we can use. Um, one of the things we need to we need to get is more information about what the effects of these products are. Um, and the only way we can get that is by, you know, if people are using them, if there are effects, ill effects, to get that intel to, to, to help us deal with the problem. I guess the thing is, well, it's, it's impossible to ban them all because you ban one, another five pop up, don't they, with a slight variation? 
Well, that's been the problem. I mean, we talk, you talked about methadrone there. I mean, you know, the, the that was banned um, a couple of well, a couple of years ago now. And yeah, you're right. You know, within within days, the the, the, the structure had changed of it, and and yeah, it's back out on the street. Steve, I appreciate the time this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Steve Rycroft, uh, Rycroft sorry, from Milton Keynes Trading Standards. 08459 455 555. You can give me a call on that. Have you got a problem with those legal highs being sold? No longer being sold in Milton Keynes, but they are legal. Kids are always going to experiment with drugs, aren't they? They've been doing it for years and years and years, and it ain't going to stop now. Should we just let them get on with it? Or do we need to come down harder? 08459 455 555. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. This really isn't working. We're doing car confusion. Catherine Boyle is it was her subject. I don't think you understand what it is she's asking. Jane has uh, posted on Facebook. I always try and park near a trolley park. If no trolley park, I get out and look to see what shop I am near. Nothing worse than a trolley full of shopping and not knowing where your car is. Black and silver cars, never again will I buy one. Red for me next time. What? Doesn't even make sense. Uh, on the subject of, uh, uh, of speeding, there's speeding, um, uh, what do they call them? Cameras, uh, average speed cameras in uh, Milton Ernest. Uh, and people are disappointed and upset. 4,300 people have been caught speeding. Uh, in the past few months since they started. Well, th- do you have sympathy for these people? One chap was caught four times in a week. Do you have any sympathy for these people, or is speeding speeding? Richard in Flittick says, Speed cameras on the A6 at Milton Ernest were widely advertised on 3CR when introduced. Plenty of signs you shouldn't be driving if you are blind. It's a little bit harsh, but... If a village is 30 miles an hour, and you drive through it at... 38 miles an hour you're speeding there is an argument should there be a little bit of flexibility around the 30 miles an hour well i don't know but if you're caught at that speed then you are speeding so should you get the points or the 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 speed awareness course Do, do you have any sympathy for these people i'm struggling a little bit and i've got points and i hate it when that letter comes through it's like oh nuts not again i'm hoping touch wood i've learnt my lesson I have pretty much. I drive at 55 or 60 miles an hour on the motorway. Have you got any sympathy for these people? They say there's not enough signage, that it's confusing, it's not fair. Oh, oh wait, 459 455 555. Am I being a little bit harsh? On the subject of uh, mishaps with your car, fun, fun things with your car. Um, this was Catherine's ridiculous topic this, that she's come up with this morning. Car confusion, call me now, 08459 455 555. Why? Jane JJ Johnson says, I always try to park near a done, trolley done, park. Done that one. It's not car confusion, it's just car stupidity. I always put a sticker in my car when I had a common car. To say so what? So I knew it was mine, I didn't try to get in other people's. Yeah, there's, there's a way of identifying your car, it's the registration plate. Yeah, but sometimes you just, you know... Put a sticker in your car. a blue car. Do you want to talk to Jane? Because I've really got no time for this. Speak to Jane in Aylesbury. Hi, Jane. Hi. Hello. Thank you for calling me now on the subject of car confusion. <laughs> what happened to you? What's wrong with Ian this morning? I don't know. He's in a right funny mood, as usual, to be honest. Monday. So what I've, happened to you, Jane? Um, I've, I, I had a red Nissan, right, and um, I changed it for a grey one. And I went shopping and I was looking for the old car. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. It's, it's easily done because it, your brain is so tuned to your other car that I think I'm about 20 minutes around this car park trying to find this car that I didn't have. Oh, Jane, what are you like? Ian, see? Car confusion. It does happen, Ian. It does? It does. Okay. Happened to Jane? I'm probably, I'm probably not the only one that's done that either. I bet you're not. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. It's happened to you. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the subject of speeding, it's Peter and Wilma Green. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Peter. We've not spoken for ages. Where have you been? I've been on other stations, actually. Sorry, I've been on other stations. Wh- why? Well, I lost interest in some of it, but that's on there, basically. What what bits did you lose interest in? 
Oh, well, I, that, that's very... It's various things, anyway. Well, get, 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 listen, because, you listen, it's your BBC, right? Yes, uh, So if you tell us where you lost interest, we can see if we can make, make sure you don't lose interest again. Well, I just feel that, uh, basically, we're not all together getting the truth anymore, the whole truth. Oh, well, where do you think we... Where do you think the, the, uh, the it's BBC... It's difficult to place it, uh, oh. put a finger on it immediately without... Looking back on what I've heard and listened, and is that to. is that the BBC in general, or is that me, or is that this station? What, what do you think? Parts, <laughs> parts. <laughs> I can't. You can't specify really, no, but no. it doesn't seem to ring. I, I I've got great faith in the BBC. Yep. I believe that they should be telling it as it is, yes, not as they think it might be, right, or in their own mind what it might be, yep. just as it is. Okay. We need. We need. We are the only. People who I can find that should be totally independent, right? But and yet I you, don't get that. But yet you've um, you've uh, been listening to other stations. What other stations have you been listening to? LBC, <laughs> Radio Five Live. <laughs> you uh, several. You know? Yeah, yeah. You've been listening to Heart. Uh, uh, no, good, no. Good, good. Too they're, much they're, music for Too me. much music. They're my nemesis. As long as you've not been listening to them, I don't mind. You can <laughs> listen to the others, although LBC uh, has gone downhill in the last seven years. Yeah. Uh, Peter, you've called in about speeding. Have you got any sympathy for these people who've been caught with the average speed cameras? No, I, do, I strongly believe, I strongly believe that uh, we should more, be more strict on speeding. Go on. Because it kills a lot of people. And uh, I think that anyone who's... Uh, been caught for speed in three in three years three times they should be banned for five years oh wow i don't think there's any other choice because they're they're obviously not taking any notice of the first or second one and uh, if they've done it three times in three years they should be banned for five I, i'd have been banned this year then pardon I, I would have been banned this year then well then then that that would be Personally, down to these, you, it? these people, Peter, they're saying in this, this village, they're saying, well, hang on a second, it's not fair. These cameras, the sign that says they're average speed cameras, it's not particularly well hidden. I was only doing 38 in a 30 mile an hour zone. Well, then they're going 33% nearly faster than they should have been. <laughs> Well, you're right, <laughs> Peter. Listen, what, what can I? How how can we make ourselves more honest here at BBC Three Counties Radio? Well, I think you should tell the stories as they are. But I mean, we know there's lots of things going on that's underneath, semi semi underneath the surface. Yeah, I th- I, permission to speak freely and tell it as, as it is. Absolutely, I, that's, that's your job. Can I, well, can I speak freely now and tell it as it is? Yeah, I think you're being paranoid. Oh, you you think so? Well, th- speaking uh, uh, freely and uh, as it is, I think you are. I, if, I'd love it if you could think. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'd love it if you could think of an example where you think we've been um, hiding the truth. Well, uh, lots of the stories that come out, we know, we know. There's lots of policies, if you like, that are coming out very quietly. No one knows. No, no one's listened to about them. Yeah. For instance. The privatisation parts of the NHS. Yes. They, they've caused quite a number of deaths. Now, no one spoke about them. It's never been talked about. No, oh, hang on. We've talked about, uh, we've talked about deaths and things. There was a thing in uh, the front page of... I'm either... talking about a private company that, that had been incorporated into okay. the... But there was a thing health. on the front page of it. Was it either the Times or the Observer yesterday about a huge number of unnecessary deaths uh, I- I- in hospitals? We talk, we, I mean, there, there have been no deaths in beds, hearts and bucks, possibly one or two, that, w- that we are aware of. And the ones that oh, have God happened... Oh, gracious me. No, no. Apart from deaths, there's been blindness as well. OK. Well, 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 where, where? Where? Well, no, well, don't mention, don't mention make, any places, but been, how do you know about it and we don't? Well, I, I, I get, I, I've had high, eye treatment, right? Right. And I've heard from other patients and I've heard from other relatives right. of different people. OK. I, I got a second opinion. I'm now under Moorfields. OK. Yeah. And I'm sure they're doing an excellent job. Right, so I, I know quite a bit about that. OK, but when, when you said that, that people have gone blind, not at Moorfields, but people have gone blind. People, Where and when? Not having their, their appointments made uh, so you like on time. You know, Peter, you know someone who has gone blind because their appointment was not made on time. Not, uh, uh, not uh, as uh, a person. Uh, not as a person. You no, see, they would, they would have to be a person for it to be a story. Well, I, I, I'm afraid you... Not every story, unless you investigate it... Yeah. 
comes to light, and there's lots of things that don't come to light. Well, apparently, but y- yet you don't know of any of these stories. This is the thing, you see. We can't have um, anecdotal well, I evidence. I we need you facts. Call, I'm sorry, but I don't believe you can call that paranoid. When you, when you go to an eye clinic, yeah. right, Yes. and the patient is supposed to have their notes yeah. given to the right. uh, ophthalmologist, yes. and they're given a sheet of paper, and the opth- ophthalmologist says... I can't deal with that. I don't know what's wrong with this patient. Okay. You can't, and that's happened that's to so you, is dangerous. it? dangerous. Has that happened to you? No, it ah. happened to two people in front of me. Okay. So, and I was offered a change of drops, which mm. put me on drops that I was taking up the, the same sort of ingredients that I was taking yes. up years ago. Yeah. So yeah. I know for a fact that I did the right thing by getting a second opinion, Peter, and they said, you mustn't change. Peter, with the greatest respect, you, you um, changing your eye drops, without being rude, it's not really a lead on BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh, sorry, I'm not saying that. No, but did no. Did I say that? No, but, no. What, but, but, but you're, the story about someone going blind because they've missed an appointment, that, that is a story, but you're saying you've heard that, but you don't know who it happened to. Well, uh, uh, you could put inquiries out over the air. To, who, to whom? Over there, just generally. OK, let's, let's put it out. You've got a chance. You've got a Have chance. Have you to... gone blind because you had an eye appointment cancelled? 08459 four double five five double five. That That's fine. That's the work, but that's the sort of a, a journalism now that makes sense. Well, the, well, Peter, I appreciate your, your, your comments and your constructive criticism. And hopefully we, we should... Well, we'll get lots of calls flooding in from people who've gone blind because they've missed an eye appointment. Yeah, OK. And when we win a Sony Award, I, I'll mention uh, you in I my speech. I don't know how many, how many lots be, uh, uh, you're going to get, but I do know no. there has been some. Peter, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Listen, it's your BBC. It's your BBC. If, you, if there is a story you think we should be covering, then do give us a call. Peter there has uh, ex- an exclusive. People have been going blind in beds, hearts and bucks because they've had eye appointments cancelled. Well, if that's you... Give us a call, 08459 four double five five double five. Go to facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR or send me a text, 81333. Start your text, WM. On the subject of what Peter was saying about he doesn't believe the BBC and BBC Three Counties Radio is giving the whole truth that they're censoring things. Well, Pat has texted in. Um, I agree with Peter's comments. Presenters doctor texts. In other words, you end texts with the word so-and-so uh, and so on and so on. These texts read in full, so on, so on, etc., etc. Pat, thank you very much for that. You see what I did there? Uh, we're getting uh, emails. Uh, William has emailed in. Dear, dear Ian, I agree with Peter about the BBC bias. A good example of this was last week's question time on BBC TV. Well, like, Peter didn't say bias. The word bias never popped up. Um, he, he, he felt we weren't getting the whole truth. And again, uh, you know, you, you could a- level the accusation at question time. I've not seen it for a while. How does it appear on this show? And if, I, I genuinely don't think that there is bias on this show. Not much bias. It's hard to be completely impartial. I don't think there is much. I'd love it if people could point out specific examples on this show so that we can improve. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number. We're talking about legal highs. Uh, legal highs were available for sale openly in Milton Keynes uh, Market. They aren't anymore, partly due to this show. Well, surely it's it's a, 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 a day to rejoice and be happy. Not according to Andrew and Copel. Morning, Andrew. Good morning, Ian. What would you like to say, sir? Well, I'm afraid that I don't know about bias there in your show, but there's a lot of hypocrisy going on. Go on. Well, I called you, uh, I don't know if you recall, a few days ago when the, the fire were going on strike when the bonfire parties were occurring, and you, you uh, uh, accused me of being a killjoy. What, d- what did I say? You said I was a killjoy because I, I, I said that the firemen had the right to go on strike and you said it was putting children uh, in danger. Yes. So, okay. you know, right. yes. Well, yes. you're uh, being yes. killjoys now about these legal highs. They're, they, if they're legal, they're legal. Yeah. I mean, why don't you campaign against things that are much more dangerous that are legal highs, like, like alcohol? I mean, how many, when was the last time you heard someone that uh, was out of their mind on methadrone or any of these other legal highs drove a car and killed someone? And yet you hear it all the time, people on alcohol. Andrew, can I ask you a question? Oh, you can it, it, it links into the, 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 the talk about bonfire night and, and this legal highs. Why are you so keen on um, a, a, a allowing children to harm themselves? 
I'm not. I'm not keen on children allowing children to harm themselves. I was right. defending the rights of firemen to strike. Okay, on on, and, on a, a night when people will be having fireworks. Responsibility on a night. If, yeah, just to clarify for people who missed it, you were uh, keen for firemen to strike on a night when where people will be having no, fireworks I wasn't and keen bonfire. On firemen nights. to strike. I'm never keen on that. But you that would be ridiculous. That was their right. So. I was keen on defending their right to okay. strike. So you were defending their the right to strike. Should have the responsibility of their okay. children. So you were defending their right to strike on a night when children will be near fireworks and fire, and now. You're defending the right for children to take dangerous legal heights. I'm, not, I'm very confused about your perspective, you Andrew. Words into my mouth. I'm, you just called me a killjoy. Being a killjoy, there. These are legal things. There are much more dangerous things. They are very well. There are, but they are campaign against. I mean, alcohol, which is much more dangerous. Andrew, Andrew, we don't know how dangerous these legal highs are because they have. Some of them are fine, I'm sure. Some of them are very, very dangerous. Uh, And uh, I think it's it's very strange for you to call me a killjoy for wanting to protect young people. It's odd. No, no, I'm calling you a killboy because you're, you're kill going boy. against these things. You called me a killjoy. You're calling them a killjoy. Let, I mean, you know, these these things, it, it's the very fact that they are legal yeah. that, that tempts people into it. So, you know... Why, hey, no, why listen, it's why? fine. Andrew, no, actually, now I think about it, you're right. Yeah, we should yet let young people uh, go to markets in Milton Keynes and buy all kinds of weird plant food and weird chemical agents uh, that have been made in China and Russia, and we should just let them smoke them and snort them. No, you're absolutely right, Andrew. I hadn't thought of that, even no, though some of them no, are cut no, with no, glass. You're and twisting around what I'm saying. You're what campaigning are you? against it. What are you are saying, things then? that are much more dangerous. Why don't you campaign against them? Well, well, maybe we'll move on to that next, but, you know, there... there, there you you we won't don't move on to it next, because there's, there's too much big business interest in it. We're not going to... You're, you're part of the media, which, which supports these things, because you, you are biased towards them. You, you, there's to, never big campaigns against... Biased towards who? Alcohol? Tobacco and alcohol, right? is there? Well, when was well, the last time you had a big campaign against that? My, my, yeah, the there's, last... there's all these <laughs> sensational documentaries about things uh, like heroin and that. The but, last nine years of my life have been a campaign against alcohol, Andrew. I've never heard you campaign against it, Ian. Well, no, because it's a private campaign, <laughs> to yeah, be honest. Well, no, I mean, what am I going to do? Out, you're scared to put it out on the media, because you're part of this big S- media machine. What? You can do it as much as you like in private. Scared to put what out? To do it. You, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't keep your job, in, quite frankly. What, what, do you, what, do you, what am I scared to do about alcohol? I, 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 I'm you're not scared to campaign about it. You don't talk about it, because there's too many big, big business interests. And you'd, if you started a campaign on this programme about alcohol... To do what? To ban alcohol? No, not to ban it. What but do you to want me res- to do? To restrict it. Uh, you, you, you'd be out of a job. You'd be getting P forty five within days. Ian, I'm sorry, you don't do it because of that. I mean, no. you may campaign in private, Andrew. But Andrew, what's the point of that? That's a- not that's oh not campaigning. Gosh, is it? This is t- you talk about conspiracy theories and paranoia. What what can I do? A bloke who used to be a comedian on television, I now present a local radio breakfast show. What can I do to campaign yeah, against alcohol? You, you, you've sold out, Ian. You were much more. You were much more <laughs> daring in the past. I was you? young and I didn't have a mortgage and two kids to feed. I'm 40 now and I've got a huge mortgage and I want to feed my children. Yeah, but you were still a bit irreverent on Channel 5, aren't you, when you're on that... When I'm talking about Big Brother, yes. When I'm, when I'm talking about big, those you idiots on Big... Ir- yeah, but you, why, why can't you... Why don't you adopt that same attitude and go after these things while you're on air? Because you're frightened of getting your P45, aren't you? Well, th- no, I won't get... Well, I don't understand what I'm, I'm afraid of doing. What, saying that alcohol is bad? What? No, but we're doing a campaign against it. You, would, you wouldn't do that, would you? I mean, you, you're perfectly uh, happy to go after these things that they are, which are actually legal. It's the same as, as alcohol okay. is legal. But uh, there's, there's been no harm caused. Has, has, has there been any instance yes. of someone dying from there's, a there's, 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 Listen, I have to move on, Andrew. I'd love to talk to you for longer. I'm not cutting you off because I'm censoring you because I'm part of the big you media machine. Be, you better not be. OK. But I have to move on. Call in again this week. We'll have a bigger talk about it. But yes, there have been lots of incidents of, of people being injured. But we'll, we'll do this. We may have to carry this over now. Speed cameras on the A6 at Bedford have clocked more than 4,300 motorists since being activated three months ago. The cameras monitor average speeds on a 30 mile an hour section of the road, which runs through Milton Ernest. We can speak now to the Liberal Democrat councillor, Charles Royden, who's Bedford Borough Council's portfolio holder for environment and transport, as well as the deputy mayor. Uh, good morning, councillor. Uh, why are speed cameras needed on this section of the road? Who, who took that decision? 
Yeah, OK. Uh, good morning. Uh, the cameras are put in place because I was requested by folks from Milton Ernest to do something about the speeding that was going on through their village. They came to see me and said, what could we do? They were very um, concerned about the speeds and the noise and all the problems of, that speeding traffic cause in a, in a, in a small village. And uh, this is a place where children are going to school. It was clearly dangerous. Uh, as a portfolio holder for highways, I've got a responsibility for safety on the roads. There are about 400 accidents on the Borough Road every year, and I have to do something to try and make sure that we don't have more children who are maimed and, 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 and injured on our roads. So the average speed cameras were an answer to that. Uh, are these cameras in place anywhere else in Bedford or, or similar cameras uh, reactivated? Uh, yeah, at, at the moment we've got them in Milton Ernest, but they're imminently uh, going to be activated in Barker's Lane. Uh, very shortly they'll be in Box End in Kempston. We'll have them along the embankment. So every road into Bedford <clears throat> warns people and has warned people for some time now that there are borough-wide speed cameras and we're activating them across the borough. So, you know, motorists really should try and make sure that they obey the speed limit. So well, you shouldn't have to say that, but obviously... <laughs> well, Charles, we've heard <laughs> we from do. some motorists this morning who, who think the cameras are... are slightly hidden and that there, there aren't signs giving them enough warning what would you say to them well, well that's just ridiculous you know? i mean that's absolutely ridiculous these cameras are really well signposted if people are driving along and they can't see them then either they've got sight difficulties or, or they're so oblivious that they shouldn't be allowed out in a car without a responsible adult because these you know if you can't see these you're a danger on the road and uh, and, and let's face it speeding is not a victimless crime these people are putting their lives at risk and other road users lives are at risk and uh, and this is a, a a really dangerous place this is a place where children cross where people People are walking along the road, uh, and they should take more care. And, and you know, I, I don't understand why people are making such a song and dance about it, because if I got a ticket for speeding through a village like that, I'd be acutely embarrassed, I'd pay my fine, and I'd hope to God nobody found out about it, because I would feel ashamed, and these people should too. Charles, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be vaguely impartial and sometimes play devil's advocate. I'm struggling to play devil's advocate on this, because if I'm cards on the table, I completely agree with you. If you, you know, if there is a sp- I've got six points. It was my fault. Nobody else's fault. I went above the speed limit. Yeah. Uh, and that... You kind of have to put your hands up and go, sorry, Gov. We, we did hear from one gentleman, though, or, or tale of one gentleman, who got four um, speeding tickets in a week. Yeah, well, then, really, he, he shouldn't be allowed on the road, should he? I mean, you know, if this is a first offence, the police will offer you a course, unless you're going really fast, and you, 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 you can't have one unless you're a repeat offender. This, this, this chap here really probably needs to go on another retraining exercise to try and, you know, uh, understand the rules of the road and how to drive safely, because, yeah, as I say, you're putting people's lives at risk. I, I, as a portfolio holder, I go around schools, and I, I see children in wheelchairs who've been run over on their way to and from school, and you see the, the terrible injuries that they have have to, the, to their legs and limbs. And, you know, if you're going that fast, you, you take responsibility for, to, to make sure that, you know, you, you, you moderate your speed. Charles, sorry to cut you off there. We have to end it there. I, I'm finding it difficult to argue with Liberal Democrat councillor Charles Royden. Do you agree with him? 08459 four double five five double five. Justin Dealey, stay there. I want to give you a full crack of the whip. We'll come to you after the travel and the news. Well, it's been a... A fiery show this morning. We've we've uh, talked about bias and hypocrisy and lies, not just in the BBC, but here at BBC Three Counties Radio. Arguments about drugs, about killjoys, about putting children in danger. Really feisty. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. It's days like this Well, I think, yeah, this is the kind of show I would like to listen to if I were driving to work or doing the school run. So thank you for that. Keep it up. We love it. More coming up between now and JVS at nine o'clock, including unpleasant letters for revolting peasants, one in the eye for legal highs, and speeding drivers say save your fivers by not speeding because of variable speed cameras. Facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR. 81333, start your text 3CR. Or do as lots of you have done this morning. Thank you so much. Give me a call. 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. And by the way, I don't want to make it the main theme of the show, but I'm, I'm happy to try and defend the output of this show specifically. The station and the BBC, to a certain extent, although it's out of my remit. But this show, more than happy to. And always, always open to constructive criticism. It's your show, dear listener. Uh, right at the beginning of the show, we were kind of struggling for a phoner, so Catherine Boyle came up with crazy things that have happened no, to... No, 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 no. Car confusion, call me now, 08459 four double five five double five. It's not really set the uh, phone-in world alight. We had some hilarious stories, I don't know what you're talking about. Is JVS going to pick it up at nine? Uh, well, he's gone out of the studio, but I dare say... 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so things that have happened to you and your car, give us a call now. Yeah, did you put it somewhere you f- and forgot about it? Did you try to get into the wrong car? Hilarious stories. Call us now, 0845 double five five double five. Uh, we're talking about speeding as well on the subject of speeding because speed cameras on the A6 at Bedford have clocked more than 4,300 motorists. They're the average speed camera, so slightly different from the Gatso ones, uh, and they uh, are on a 30 mile an hour section of road which runs through Milton Ernest. Lots of the residents and the people who use that road are very disappointed. Not finding much support for them at the moment. Hazel's in Radwell. Hazel, uh, uh, do you support these, uh, these drivers who've been caught? Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, no, definitely not, because the signage is adequate on these on the notification of the cameras, right. and and all the speed signage is is perfectly adequate. Um, there's no excuse really. Um, I live in the next village to Milton Ernest, which is Radwell, um, and also the adjoining village of Selmersham. We have an ongoing speeding problem through our two villages. Um, we have. Our parish council has tried and tried for us um, to get some speeding control in place. Um, We have a 30-mile limit through the village, which opens out into a national average on a short stretch of road between Radwell and Felmersham, and then it drops down to the 30-mile again. People still ignore this. We have two small stone bridges um, in each village, Um, They're not built for heavy, big traffic, um, definitely not for speeding traffic. Um, Some of them, they have obscured bends, um, and also up through Radwell, there is a slope, um, a hill up through through the village, and cars come down that hill at ridiculous speeds, well over the 30-mile-an-hour limit. And the times... I, I live fairly close to the river bridge, and the times I hear screeching brakes and wait for the bang is well, innumerable. So we definitely badly, badly need some speeding control, extra speeding control through our villages. Well, we spoke to Councillor Charles Royden. I think Radwell was one of the places he mentioned that they were looking at installing cameras. So that, that could be... You, you'd welcome them, would you? We would welcome them, definitely. We, need, we definitely need some form of traffic calming through this area. Hazel, I appreciate your call. Very little sympathy for the upset drivers. We'll speak to Justin Dealey in about 25 minutes or so to uh, get, uh, to get uh, the word on the streets to find out exactly uh, what it is. But I, I do think... I'm struggling to be impartial on this, if I'm honest. And I've got points. Six points. Not proud of it. Got caught. Thought I'd learnt my lesson. Didn't. Got some more points. Mm. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. You get caught, though. It's your fault, isn't it? Uh, lots of text here. All calls sold in the UK should... All, all cars, sorry, should be governed to a maximum speed of 75 miles per hour by law, says David. Pete in Stockfold says, Why are people complaining about how visible the average speed cameras are? Surely as long as the area is signposted well enough, how visible the cameras are is irrelevant, as it's an average speed for all of them. Slowing down for them wouldn't really make a difference. Stick below the limit and you'll be fine, says Pete and Stopfold. Uh, Vaughn says, travelling 30 miles an hour through a village this morning and I was overtaken. Obviously that driver has no idea what a 30 mile per hour limit means. Bring in more cameras. And uh, Tim in Bromham says, I fully support the cameras in Milton Ernest. A 30 miles per hour limit is there for a reason and you shouldn't speed through villages anyway. I drive through that village all the time. If you can't see the signs, then you are an idiot. 08459 four double five five double five. Hey, now, just look at you. Yeah, you, dear listener, with your clean faces and soft hands. Some of you have even been to school and read books. But don't let all that soap and free education fool you. You are nothing but peasants, especially if you live in Welland Garden City. The Marquis of Salisbury is, has sent letters to his minions claiming his manorial rights in Welling. But don't worry, he doesn't want your biggest bag of wool or your son to fight in his private army. It's 2013 and this time it's about land. Or well, some residents have launched a counter campaign called the Peasants' Revolt. But do they stand a chance against thousands of years of history? Well, let's hope Judith Bray, who is a land law expert from Buckingham University, can shed some light. Good morning, Judith. Good morning. Manorial rights, what exactly are they and and how long have they been around? Well, manorial rights have been around since the um, Norman Conquest, so they've been around a long time. They link to the title of Lord of the Manor which I think Lord Salisbury is claiming is Lord of the Manor, their right to enjoy um, a right over someone else's land, which originally linked to the manor. 
So you granted your subjects enjoyment of the land, um, and in return you reserved yourself the right to hold a fair, a right to shoot or fish or take minerals from the land. Now that relationship is all gone now, but the rights have remained. And could they be legally enforced? Well, they can be legally enforced. The position that um, the why it is in the news at the moment is that they they were what were called overriding rights, and they were actually rights which the government um, had issues with. So, in two thousand and two, the Land Registration Act was passed, which included manorial rights and a long category of rights. And the position in 2003, when the Act came into force, was that these rights, called overriding rights, a certain number of them could no longer be enforced unless they were on the land registry title of the land over which they wanted to enforce the right. And the date was October the 13th, 2013 and that's why it is now in the news and that is why certain landowners including the one you mentioned Lord Salisbury are trying to ensure that those rights go onto the register. We spoke to a resident uh, earlier on in the show Amanda who is concerned she's concerned about fracking because of the, the fact that he can extract minerals but also she just she's just paid off her mortgage and she feels slightly indignant to put it mildly that, that someone kind of has ownership of the property that she owns. Well, well, it's difficult for me to advise on an individual case without knowing all the details, but all of these rights that are now, you know, the landowner is trying to enforce are in, are in, or are enforceable and are now enforceable. The reason they're putting them onto the land registry title is because if the land is then sold, that right would then be binding on the purchaser. So... I'm afraid the right will be enforceable unless any of those whose land these rights um, connect to, if any of those residents think that the right is not a true right because they don't think that they've inherited it or they don't think they've purchased it, then they can challenge. And it would be worth taking legal advice. Mm. Should people be worried about this, Judith, or is it just a bit of old-fashioned nonsense and tradition that, that doesn't really have an impact? I don't think in the vast majority of cases people should be concerned. The holders of the rights are just taking this as a precautionary measure because unless they're on the register, unless they've applied to put them on the register this year, they will no, no longer be enforceable. So I don't think that they should be concerned. In the vast majority of cases, there will be no minerals. There will be you know, nothing that the lord of the manor can extract from the land. And the position isn't really different today because the overriding right was in existence Thank you very much for your time, Judith. It's, it's a complicated thing, but I, I appreciate your, your explaining it. Thank you. Judith Bray, land law expert from Buckingham University. Do give us a call this morning. 08459 455 555 is the telephone number. We're still taking your calls for no better reason than I just want to prove a point on um, confusing cars. What's happened to you that's confused you uh, about... No, 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 no. What? Car confusion? Call me now. 08459 455 555. We've got some on Facebook. Do you want to hear them? No. Lisa Hunter. OK, I'll have another try. Parked at the school as I was running late. Oh, she's the one that got it wrong last yeah, time, wasn't she? she? did. Okay. Never mind. It's easily done. Once I collected the boys, little darlings run ahead of me, I followed and walked straight past the car. An hour later, I went out to do a quick trip to the shops. No car and had a panic and a little cry, but don't tell anyone. As I thought the car had been stolen, I was about to call the police when the eldest piped up, you've left the car down the road. Car confusion or just an idiot, says Lisa. Don't beat yourself up, Lisa. It's easily done. Uh, who was it? it was Andrew wasn't it earlier on in the show who said uh, I was a killjoy for um, uh, wanting to be part of a campaign to ban legal hires yeah. well he said he called me a kill boy and he said I would be too afraid to start a campaign to stop alcohol or something I didn't quite understand it well th- this is now can we just stop this now this is now spread into a Twitter thing oh has it uh, the, the quadrant have tweeted me if Ian Lee thinks his ridiculous alcohol out campaign is going to stop people drinking at the qu- quadrant he can get knotted hashtag kill boy can we just stop this now i'm not starting a campaign to stop people drinking i'm not i'm not involved 
partly, it was Andrew's idea, wasn't it? It was Andrew's idea, he, but uh, partly because I don't want to lose my job, and I would do if I started a campaign to do that. I'd get the sack. I wouldn't. Let's keep this brief. Oh. No, I've moved away from you because you came in. You're talking like Phyllis. I'm sorry. So I don't, I don't want... What have you got? Well, I don't know. I think I might. I might just be on the verge oh. of, uh, of some kind of terrible illness. Oh, no, don't, because I, I, when I get a cold, it goes straight to my chest. I have to take three or four days off. Oh. It's, it's bad for, for everyone. It's bad for me. If I don't work, I don't get paid. And the listeners have to put up with James Whale. So I'm joking, I'm joking, <laughs> I'm joking. But I can't, I can't, if Christmas is coming up, I can't afford any more sick days. You have actually moved away from me. Yes, yes. It's OK. I, I won't get any closer. These germs are just floating around this little box we're in now. And it's my birthday week as well. Oh. I don't want to be ill on my birthday week. When, when are you 45? Uh, <laughs> I shall be another year older on Thursday. Excellent stuff. Well, congratulations on that. Let's get on with it. Are you going to spend the whole time with your hand over your mouth now? I am. Are you going to be picking up the uh, the story that uh, Kath has come up with? C- confusing things that have happened no, in your... No, no, no. Car confusion. Call me now. 0845 No, because I have absolutely no idea what on earth you're talking about. Do I. It's a desperate I can give you an idea. Mike in Melbourne went into town in the car, came home on the bus when I realised car wasn't outside of my house, had to rush back to Bedford as I'd only paid for two hours parking. Tara and Laura would never have sunk to these levels. No, producers. no. It really is. What, are you do- what have you decided to run with instead, then? Coming up on the big phone into that nine, uh, very interested in this um, manorial story you were discussing earlier, and I'm going to be asking from nine, are the Wellin Hatfield protesters wasting their time? The Marquis of Salisbury has told the people of Wellin Hatfield he's keeping his ownership of their back gardens. But they're not taking it lying down, led by a local lady, Amanda White, who I thought was very articulate. She was good, wasn't she? She Very, very good, yes. Uh, Locals have launched a modern-day peasant's revolt, demanding he gives up his manorial rights. Well, I'm just wondering, I mean, do you sympathise with them? Do you think absolutely you can understand why they are so upset about this if if you had paid your mortgage off if as far as you were concerned you owned your home and mm. then to suddenly find that actually some member of the aristocracy says well actually no all the time it was my garden mm. where you think you live that's actually my land would you also be upset or do you think no hang on a minute this is this is totally and utterly ridiculous i mean you've got far more important things to worry about for example the bigger concern is the family from hell moving in next door yeah. actually if the family from hell move in next door your life is going to be far more blighted than the fact that your back garden is owned by uh, the uh, well, what's he lord lord salisbury lord salisbury yes uh, who probably won't ever come anywhere near your back garden, won't, certainly won't start having a fox hunt through your back garden and probably will never go digging it up looking for coal or anything like that. I want your views from Nine this morning. Are the Wellin Hatfield protesters wasting their time or do you absolutely sympathise with them? 08459 four double five five double five. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the big phone-in. Joyce in Leegrave wants a word. Good morning, Joyce. Good morning. What would you like to say? You're worried about germs. I can hear your hand over your mouth. My hand is over my... I know it looks rude, Jonathan, but I hope you don't take it. I can see you from here. Listen, the old-fashioned way is to have an onion and cut it the bottom flat so it stands on a saucer or whatever because it stains. Yes. And cut it in half so you've got the top catching all the germs. And every day, if you can't afford another onion, you cut the top off and keep it... Listen like that and that would catch your germs joyce i'm doing okay i can afford an onion a day if i wanted to <laughs> so you yeah you're saying every time i come in here this week ian's gonna have now an, an onion stuck on a plate so bring some sausage and mash with you yeah Same Sh- time. Shouldn't, uh, surely it's jonathan's responsibility to supply the onion is it? <laughs> he's the one who's got the lurgy oh listen why are we still dialing oh eight four five what? well that's the phone number that's why love yeah well, yeah but why can't we ring a local number save well, us money well, I don't know. How much does an 0845 number cost? Local rate. Local, Lo- local rate, Joyce. Oh, oh, thank you. That relieves me what? a lot. Good. Would you, I'm glad you're relieved. Would you like to apologise to Jonathan, myself and the BBC? I'm so sorry for that. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Do, do, do. Oh, that's that microphone. Look, I was talking away to myself. Literally talking away to myself. What a plum. What a massive plum I am. Speeding. We're talking about speeding. A small village has had uh, uh, speed cameras installed. Not the normal Gatso speed cameras, but the, uh, the average speed cameras 
4,300 motorists have uh, been uh, caught speeding since they were activated three months ago. Have you got any sympathy for them? Um, uh, OC says, I've sent many texts scoffing at the idea that all speed cameras are safety cameras, but Milton Ernest is one place I am more than happy to stay below 30 miles per hour. Average speed cameras are fairer than spot ones because they allow you to correct a momentary oversight. That's true. And Pat in Upper Sundon. Speeding in my village is bad, Upper Sundon. Not only do many drivers speed, they also drive on the wrong side of the road around bends. Oh, I was going around a tight bend in, Jet bend in Gerard's Cross on Saturday, going to see my mum, and this silly woman in her mini was coming around uh, really fast. I'm not going to estimate speed, I've got no idea. Really fast, in the middle of the road. Oh, she got short shrift from me. She got a beep on the horn. Two beeps, that's how angry I was. Um, on this, Graham's in Oxy. Morning, Graham. Morning, Chew. Hello. Yeah, what would you like to say, sir? Yeah, um, I would suggest, I would argue, and uh, I know this is a sweeping statement, that um, the majority of drivers um, don't take uh, speed cameras seriously. And the reason for that is that um, I live on a main road, and um, my drive is 30 metres from the end of the lines. You know the lines in the road? Yes. The speed camera? Yeah, yeah, I've seen them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happens is cars come up to the speed camera, which is probably situated about 200 metres down the road. Um, they slow down, yeah? They go yeah. over the lines, yeah? And yeah. as soon as they finish the lines, yeah. they accelerate. Yes. And at one time, we were coming out of our drive, slowly, as we have to, and then he had the nose of the car knocked off. Oh, blimey. Because they accelerate. They come up to the, they come up to the lines, slow down, and then... Whoosh, I've seen, Graham, I've seen it happen. Sorry to cut you short, I just, we just need to get in a few more voices, but thank you for that. 08459 four double five five double five. Now, on this programme, we revealed that legal highs were being sold openly on Milton Keynes Market. Well, some have called us a killjoy, but they are no longer being sold. Uh, our reporter, Craig Lewis, uh, bought some legal highs. He bought herbal haze, blueberry flavour, from the market on Thursday, but the drugs have been removed by Friday. Well, last week we spoke to Inspector Ian Jarvis from Milton Keynes Police. He's back on the line. Good morning, Ian. Morning, Ian. How are you? I- I'm good, thank you. It sounds like a positive step. What, what happened? Well, effectively, um, I mean, thank you very much to your show. I think that raising the awareness and a bit of public pressure... Um, sort of um, got through to the market management and they made a, a very wise, in my opinion, decision um, effectively uh, asking or told, instructed the person selling legal highs that they no longer wanted him selling on their market. Um, the fact is, I mean, they could turn around to any any of their storeholders and say, look, don't don't sell, um, you know, uh, dried pasta if they really wanted to. Um, we, we've got the, we have the advantage there that yep. the, the, the market owners can decide what they want sold on their market um and hats off to him i had a really good chat to the uh, the owners well, the, the 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 market manager specifically um he wants me to go down do some training with him so he can recognize them in the future as well so he's very pro we've we've had we've had one call this morning ian calling us and i guess by association yourself killjoys what would you say to, to that kind of attitude it's a it's a it's a <laughs> It's a bit upsetting, really, because mm. what, we're, what we're trying to do and what we're trying to get through is that these things are harmful. I mean, these, these people are unscrupulous, in my opinion. What they're actually doing is using legislation to get round selling harmful products uh, effectively, to, like you said earlier, I heard Joe and, and yourself, people that um, are susceptible to trying and experimenting with substances that effectively are harmful. Otherwise, they wouldn't have the labelling that they have. Uh, as Craig um, said uh, earlier on this morning, you know, do, do not inhale, not for human consumption. Uh, research drugs only. But we all know what they're being used for. Um, you know, if we, we've, we've got to have a moralistic stance as well, and we've got to be real. Uh, and you know just saving one life then it's worth banning these drugs uh, and and craig bought some uh, herbal haze i'm sure he's going to dispose of it responsibly <laughs> um it, it it sounded pretty nasty and it says i mean you, i'm guessing you smoke it it says if you inhale any fumes from this then go and seek a poison expert or something this, this stuff is nasty stuff isn't it Yes, I mean, I've got some herbal haze sat in front of me that I use for training purposes, and believe it or oh, not, yeah. it's called herbal haze. It was um, obtained a couple of months before Craig obtained his, and the ingredients are totally different. That's right. how quick they change. But it's still being packaged and sold and marketed as, as herbal haze in a, in a nice package to catch the attention. 
obviously, I mean, well, th- this stuff basically it's. Um, it, it, it sold as like incense, etc. Not for human consumption or research drug. Um, no research, and it's certainly not going to be um, uh, you know used as incense. That, that's what it's for. It's for consumption. Mm. Um, as you heard this morning, the ingredients uh, sometimes you, they're so long-winded you've never heard of them. And this particular one um, that's in I, I know because I've spoken to Craig and done a little bit of research on it. It's very similar in chemical compound to some substances that are now a class B. Right. Um, but, and has been cited on, on some blogs I've seen uh, and, and some web research I've done, that it's actually stronger uh, than the original herbal haze and much, much stronger than and cannabis alone, which is what it's trying to mimic and imitate. Uh, Inspector Ian Jarvis, Milton Keynes Police. Well done. Let's consider that one in the eye. I know the battle continues, but thank you very much indeed. Do you think we're being killed, Joyce? No, come on. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties. Morning. Ah, oh. I've just been sent. My uncle Huey has just sent me a picture of me as a little baby with my mum and my dad and my sister as a, as a little girl outside my nan's. Isn't that nice? That's nice. About forty years old. That picture isn't that wonderful. Morning. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. We'll speak to Justin Dealey soon, talking about speeding. Uh, we're also talking uh, about um, confusing car situations that you have been involved with. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry, Rita Culligan. Years ago, I had an Astra, very common in Luton, where I worked. Yeah. I worked nights for Royal Mail, and early one morning, I got into my car to go home. After a few minutes of adjusting the mirror and waiting for it to warm up, another postman knocked on the window. Yes. He thanked me for warming his car up, and then asked if I was stealing it. No, it's my car. No, he said. Yours is there, pointing to an identical Astra next to his one. How does she get in it? How well, maybe the keys, keys work? all work. I don't understand. The thing, the thing I like about phone is, is when they generate debates... Uh, conversation, funny stories. Yeah, this is just like a featurette. Car confusion. It happens. Call me now. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Rest assured, none of this will be making this week's podcast. None of this will be making this week's podcast. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Steve's on the line. Good morning, Steve. Morning. Steve, I'll you're be do- quick. No, well, I, don't, I never believe you. Legal highs. What do you want to say? Right, they're legal. So at the end of the day, what are the police and what are you going on about it for? At the end of the day, it, it's not, they're not breaking the law. No. Nope. All right, it's not a nice thing for people to take. If but they want to take it, you can drink, you can smoke. So what's the difference? Are you going to ban fags and ban alcohol and ban pubs if you're going to start doing that line? The thing about them is, people don't know what's in them. They are on the fringes of legality. They are legal, but they're also, they're they're very, very dangerous. They can lead to psychotic episodes. Some of them can be fun, I'm sure. But do we really want our kids smoking and snorting stuff when we don't know what's in it? No, of course we don't. I mean, you know, I appreciate that you're caring and thoughtful and everything else. Thank you. At the end of the the day, the big picture is people are going to take stuff, whatever the law says, whether it's legal or not legal. But at the end of the day, I'm surely, as a taxpayer, I want the police doing other issues and not to concern themselves with, uh, compared to what's actually happening out there with gun crime and everything else, and rapes and murders, no. they're worrying about someone sending a bit of gear on, on a market. It, at the end of the day, if, if, mm. at the end of the day, they should be tested. Steve. Or if they've been tested and they're not as bad as what made out that's fair enough they haven't been tested it doesn't the police doesn't work it doesn't work like that though does it it doesn't work on they focus on one thing at the expense of all the others so while they are looking into legal highs it didn't take them much time they had to phone up the market and they stopped while they're looking into that they are also looking at car crime and rapes and murders it's not they they, they don't just focus on one thing at a time no i'm fully aware of that i know that but it's, it's funny how that we think to pay a fortune it to, to fund the, the government and the police force, and yet they've never got time to come out to someone or come out, you know, they're a man short, they're a car short. So what happens to all the money? I mean, as a taxpayer, surely we have the right to prioritise what the actual police should be doing along the pro- and that, on that line. At the end of the day, people are fed up with it. Anyway, as on the thing, it's illegal. Why? What, what are you sticking your nose in for? There's thousands of things that people do, and you can't please everybody, can you? Well, it t- um, turns out I've not pleased you, Steve. Have you ever no, had any car? Com- ever had any car confusion? 
can't remember. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Um, Lynn's in Hazelmere. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Ian. You've had some car confusion, have you? Uh, well, it was my mum, actually. But oh. She's a bit ditzy. Um, we've gone shopping um, in Eastleigh in Hampshire, and I had a, a little white Fiesta then, and I was parked outside the shop, <clears throat> and I'd gone in one, and mum had gone in another, and I said, I'll meet you back at the car. Well, she got in the wrong car, which was identical to mine, and then she... Um, went through the glove compartment and munched all the sweets and thought, oh, that was nice, and oh. left me some sweets. Yeah. And she ate all the sweets and everything, and then a little chap in a in a hat got in the car with her, and um, she hit him with a handbag. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> she assaulted a man in a car? <laughs> it was really quite funny. He was very nice about it. So, so uh, and what did, what did he say? He, thought, he saw the funny side of it, because mm. my car was parked just two cars up. Wow. Um, which was exactly the same as mine, and I was actually watching. I couldn't do anything for laughing because, and she was saying, "Get out of the car! It's my daughter's car! Get out!" Get out, Lynn. Thank you very much indeed. Bless your mum for that. Jonathan is uh, has got a story as well about um, car confusion. Yeah, hi there, Ian. Uh, you jolted my memory with the other stories. Oh. Uh, I just remembered. I've, I've got a little box of course on myself, and a nice little, little red course. I'm i just gone to do some shopping in one of these big, big supermarkets and uh, uh, massive parking lot. So I go inside, do my shopping. You know what it, how it is when you do your shopping, you have a list, you get it done, you go back outside with the bag, find the nearest box of course or red, uh, jump into it. And as I sat down, I didn't have the same, it didn't have the same layout. Yeah. And I just stared for like a few minutes. I was like, I couldn't realize what I'd done. I, I'd gone in, unlocked, gone into someone else's car. And it's just the shock, you know, when you yeah. get down to the car and you realize this isn't mine <laughs> it's shocking but yeah it was it was it wasn't did you deep, how but, did, yeah i'm surprised at how these keys are opening other people's cars <laughs> that's what i was thinking too actually yeah, it's, it, 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 i've got an older car myself so it's probably the older cars are like that but right. i don't want it you know i don't want to give anyone uh, any ideas but yes yeah. we don't um, encourage car crime jonathan thank you very much for that i remember once i did spend ages trying to and i say ages it was several minutes trying to get into a, a, a volkswagen polo um but and i was there for ages where, where are this key fit in i was trying the other doors and i was going oh nuts isn't it the, the lockers jammed or something and it was there for ages and then i realized that my car was two cars down but i wouldn't tell that story on the radio well it's car confusion you should oh eight four five nine four double five five double five it happens let's share you finished Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Ah oh dear. If you want to give us a call about that or anything, you can. Should we have a quick look at the front page of the newspapers? Yes. Why don't we? We've not uh, had a look at them today. It's been quite a busy show. Where shall we start? I tell you what, let's do. Um, let's do the Independent. Wow, lots of pictures of the the typhoon that's um, take- over ten thousand people will have died. Isn't that incredible? The day after the typhoon uh, and the big six energy firms face investor exodus. Uh, the Times, more pictures of the typhoon. Doctors deserting A&E. Uh, the Guardian, pictures of a young lad with a... With a well, if, I mean, it's a nasty gash to the eye, but if, that all, if that's all he's got, well, good luck him. Uh, but uh, more um, pictures of the destruction there. And the Daily Telegraph has gone with a picture of the Queen wearing not one, not two, but four poppies. Um, and Welby, families hurt by absurd pressure of Christmas. The absurd and ridiculous pressure to have a perfect Christmas puts relationships under strain and spoils life. I know what you mean. It can be hard work. Um, oh, we haven't got the Express. We've got. Oh no, there it is. We've got the Express there. Let's speak to Howard first of all in Milton Keynes about speeding before we do these last three papers. Howard, what do you think about these speeding cameras? Um, can I dare? I feel a butt coming on. Uh, well. They are a good idea in some places, but in other places they seem to be a bit of a, a lost cause. Well, it, what what are the places that are a lost cause? Hang on a minute. Sorry. What, what are you doing? Sorry? What, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm in my car. Oh, OK, right. I hope your hand's free. Yeah. Excellent I stuff. I am now. Good lad. Oh, blimey. Right, go on. So, go right. on. What do you want to oh. say? Um, well, I, I was working for a previous company, and we had trackers in the vehicles, um... We got caught um, if we were doing certain speed. Um, and then obviously we were disciplined uh, if we were doing a certain speed over that particular part of the road. Um, but generally, I don't speed. That is not me. I mean, listen, uh, Howard. If you speed and you get caught. 
tough. Doesn't matter where the camera is. I've got yeah, six points I, on my licence. It's my yeah. fault. I'm not going to blame anybody. It's my fault for yeah. being an idiot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I live in a particular road where I live. Um, now, I have the main fire station in the same road where I live. Yeah. Now, obviously, when they come on to get us out, they come down that road like bat out of hell. Yeah. <clears throat> but other people, the likes of me and you and other people that just drive generally... They come down that road like there's no tomorrow, and it and it just frightens me because, you know, I just don't understand why people have to drive at such fast speeds down small roads and small and through villages. You know. It's, it's, well, this is the thing, Howard, thank you for that. This is the thing, because to drive through a village, you normally have to drive through open country roads where the speed limit is, I think, I think 50, generally 50 miles an hour. And the inconvenience of having to slow down to a miserly 30 miles an hour as you drive two miles through a village. Oh, dear, why should I have to do that? Well, because you don't want to knock someone over. That's why. 08459 455 555. What a remarkable... So, I mean, let's be honest, some of you are idiots. Listen to this ridiculous tweet from Rosemary. I can't believe, Ian, how you can announce 10,000 dead in, Philippine, in the Philippines as incredible and in a happy tone of voice. It's incredible that 10,000 people have died. Of course I didn't do it in a happy tone of voice, you silly, silly sausage. Do you know what, Rosemary? People like you are going to be blocked. 525,600 minutes. Now that's inappropriate. 8.46, it's Monday the 11th of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Following a BBC Three Counties radio investigation, legal highs are no longer being sold on Milton Keynes Market. More than 4,300 motorists have been caught speeding by cameras on the A6 in Bedfordshire since they were activated three months ago. In sport, MK Dons have been drawn at home to Dover in the second round of the FA Cup. Stevenage also have a home draw against Stourbridge. Coming up, we'll be speaking to Justin Dealey about speeding and possibly you too. Oh, wait, not you, not the band. Oh, eight four five. That'd be ridiculous. Oh, I know Bono's probably concerned about it. Anyway, you, call her. Oh, eight four five. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the weather with Elizabeth. Uh, getting more texts and comments about speeding. Ian, I think those whinging... I think the whinging of those complaining about the average speed camera signage are pathetic. I'm not from the area, but I'm sure as you enter the village, there's a large round sign with 30 in a red circle. If you took your test and you are competent, that sign should be enough, as it seems to be for the majority. I have a couple of mottos as a coach driver. I will drive down your road as I want you to drive down mine, and I will drive you how I want to be driven. Ronnie in Reading. Um, we'll come to Graham in a second. While we're on the subject of speeding, let's uh, we've been off for a while. I'd like to speak to Justin Dealey. Morning, Justin. Morning, boss. The reason that we are talking about speeding is because new speed cameras. Well, I say new; they've been there for uh, about three months. Uh, and the village uh, Milton Ernest and yes. four thousand three hundred motorists have been caught speeding since being activated three months ago. That's right. And I can't give you the figure on how much has been raised uh, because uh, the fine has recently gone up from sixty pounds to a hundred. Pounds. Uh, that's been in the last couple of weeks or so. Some of those drivers haven't been traced, and some of them, of course, they don't actually pay the fine. What they do, they pay £91 to go on one of these speed awareness courses, which, of course, you've been on. So we can't give you an accurate figure no. on how much money's actually been raised but here. What, what's, what's the problem? What's, why are people complaining about these cameras? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's the signage, really. You're going from a 50, uh, where there are big Gatso cameras, and then suddenly you go into the village, which is 30 miles per hour, and they've got these average speed cameras which are on top of a pole. Now, that to me it is not very clear, but I think, I think the message has been slightly misunderstood. We spoke to Chiro earlier on. He knows somebody who got four tickets in one day, which yeah, I find incredible. Yeah. Um, I've also been talking to a lady in the village. This is at Valerie Lincoln, and I want to pick up on this point off the back of this. Here's what happened earlier. Well, Valerie, we're in your village, Milton Ernest, as we look up and down here. Nobody's doing 30 miles an hour, are they? No, most of them aren't. So these cameras haven't made any difference at all to safety here? I would say personally, no, I don't think they have. So what's the answer? If they've been put in to to slow motorists down and people are still speeding, what is the answer? Better teaching of driving and you have to have lessons every few years. You think that's that's the answer? The standard of driving is very low in this country now. But in reality, that's not going to happen, though, is it? Sadly, you know, retesting no, people. reality, it isn't. But 
I mean, I wouldn't particularly want to be retested because I don't think I'd pass again. Um, <laughs> so but, how do we deal with the problem now? Here and now, in this village, people still speeding. How do you think we can deal with it? I have no idea except to improve driving standards. There None you go whatsoever. In. Yep, go on. So, my point is, how do you deal with it? You know, this morning you've heard from people saying, well, I've got absolutely no sympathy for these people driving through the village. They're idiots. If they're speeding, uh, they shouldn't be on the roads. That's all fine. That's all good and well. But these cameras have been placed into Milton Ernest to try and make a difference, to try and slow the traffic down yep. and improve safety. Now, clearly, if 4,364 people have been fined already, that's not working. So take the opinions out of the equation how do we make that village safer? Nobody's got the answer. Well, let's just sack off the speed limit, shall we? If if people aren't slowing down for speed cameras, let's just get rid of the speed limit. Well, that's obviously not going to work either, is it? But uh, seriously, you've got, what, about seven minutes of your programme left. Everyone, you know, has got an opinion on speeding motorists and and all the rest of it, but the issue of actually slowing traffic down, which is why the cameras are there, that's not working. So how do you deal with this problem which is continuing to happen? Well, but but, I don't understand what you're saying. What is your suggestion? That, That if you get caught on an average speed camera, you yep. are an idiot. Yep. And if you get caught four times in one day, flipping it, you should have mm. your licence whipped off you immediately. There is a 30 mile per hour uh, speed limit sign there, yes. that as you said earlier, is quite clear. Mm-hmm. So, if people can't abide by that, and they're getting tickets, I've got no sympathy for them yeah. in the slightest. But again, it's an opinion. How do you deal with the problem? If the cameras are there to stop people speeding, but people are still speeding, how do you deal with with that problem. You keep fining them and you keep giving them points until they stop. But people are being fined all the time. No. And people again this morning, from what I saw, somebody mentioned, well, it was advertised on BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, that's all good and well, but clearly, again, that's not working. Be, it doesn't need to be advertised anywhere. As long as there is a sign there saying 30 miles per hour, which there is, hmm. then it is up to the individual to follow that. If they <laughs> don't want to follow that and adhere to that rule, yeah. then that's fine, but that's their problem. But, but whatever's uh, going on, it's not working, is it? Well, it's we, not working. Well, we don't know that because we don't know how many people were speeding before the cameras were installed. So we don't know. It could be working brilliantly. When I was there this morning, and again, if I'm going to look at traffic, what I think is 30 miles an hour, I would say probably 80% of traffic going through that village this morning was going above 30 miles an hour. What they need to do there, I think, you know, in my opinion, is make the cameras more visible. Because you've got the big Gatso cameras, you know they're there, people are slowing down for those cameras. When they're going through the village, they think there are no cameras there. They can't see this big pole with a camera on it, so make the cameras more visible and again, put further signs up saying this is an average speed limit and I think that would do the job but as we currently stand, as we know Ian, people are not slowing down. Justin, I don't suppose you got anywhere on that car confusion nonsense that Kat came up with, did you? <laughs> well, do you know what, car confusion I actually left um, two pairs of shoes on the top of my car once and uh, drove off, I was in Milson Keynes, went back the following day and they were still in the car park. Is that car confusion? It certainly is, thanks for calling yeah, well, thanks. You didn't. Thank you very much indeed. Let's uh, on the subject of speeding. Let's go to Peter in Dunstable. Morning, Peter. Good morning, Ian. According to Justin and uh, the lady we spoke to there, it's not working. Well, uh, it, it is down to the driver. Uh, recently, in Dunstable, in the road I live in, they've introduced a twenty mile an hour speed limit. Yeah. Prior to that, it was thirty. Outside my house, in the past nine years, there have been five accidents through speeding. The people use our road, and they still use it now. I would think the average speed down the road is probably 40, 45 miles an hour. The, um, I, I spoke with a local councillor about it just very recently. Yes. He tells me that the police will not do anything about it because the council won't pay them extra money to do it. Oh. So right. what is the point of putting us 20 mile an hour speed limit and all the signs and all the nonsense that's gone on it's a total waste of money. Graham, uh, no, sorry, Peter, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Graham is up next on the subject of uh, car car things that have happened to you that are not apparently that fun. Uh, no, no, no. Car confusion, call me now. No. Hi, Graham. You talk to him. Go on, then. Hello, Graham. <laughs> Hello, Graham. I'm here. Hello. There was a bit of fader confusion. Tell me your story. Right. Um, back in, ni- um, I think it was about 1982. Sounds fun already. I, I was I was in my car and you, I, yeah, there was an escort and you could push the handle on the driver's door up so you could just slam the door and not have to lock it and as I stood up to, to as I, after I'd done that to shut the door the uh, keys fell out of my pocket and as, as the door slammed the keys were on the, on the driver's seat my brother got out a screwdriver just stuck it in turned the lock and opened it oh and uh, another thing for you um, please back in uh, 
this was in 1984. I had a Mini Cooper S, uh, 1971. It was registered down in Thames Ditton in Surrey. And I pulled into a car park. And as we, my brother and I walked away, my brother noticed the car beside it was the next consecutive number. Oh. My, mine was ELN 907J, and this was ELN 908J. Car What's siblings. What's that happening? <laughs> Graham, thank you very much indeed. And no you've problem. just proven, Ian, car confusion happens. It does. Even in the 80s. 08459 four double five five double five was the number you've been calling. Thank you, listeners. You expect me to come back in after that? Mm. After you've killed... Listen, the, 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 this show is, uh, is, is, could, be, could be classed as a, a warm-up show for JVS. We've just killed the audience stone flat with... What are you talking about? They're revved. They're pumped. But, but, well, I, any, any air that may have been in their tyres was completely let down by Graham then. He, he was, it was a car... What are about? He was parked next to the car with a consecutive number plate. Are you not listening? Yeah, I don't know. The way. That's not confusing. That, we're not talking about car s- semi-coincidences. That's what he's called it. He's called the car semi-coincidences hotline. He wants BBC sorry for that. No, we were doing car confusion. There was nothing confusing about that. The only confusing thing was, how on earth did we let that call go on the radio and give not just one story, but two stories? Hey, you listen to me. If Graham calls, Graham gets on. That's the rule. Would you like to apologise to the listeners? No. Unbelievable. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to apologise because it wasn't my fault. If anyone... I tell you what, I'm going to get Catherine to write you all uh, sorry notes after the show. Well, uh, You can't win them all. Thank you very much, everyone who took part. You are very, very good sports. JVS is coming up next. Should be a cracking show. Uh, but from me, until tomorrow at six o'clock, I'll see you then. Ta-ta. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian.